First World Order Radio, final lead, final lead. We are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday at 8 o'clock, we are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in levels in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence, and indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence, and indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages for us to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have activated Pioneer Man in which I produced this black chemical called melody. How you doing tonight, Brother L, my co-host? Uh, very well, very well, boy. How you doing? I'm doing excellent. All right, wonderful. Brother El, was you all able to hear the music? I didn't hear any music. I heard the music uh, hear the music maybe either? a little bit, and it cut off. All I heard a lot mm. of muffled sounds, and uh, I heard you punching punching uh, punching keys a lot, working right. a lot of doing a lot of work. It sounded like what you were doing, moving around a lot. Right. Uh, but that was all I heard. Hmm. Mm. Everything else was drowning out, you know. Right. So it still has a small tint of it, kind of a drowning sound, a muffled sound, but not too bad. I can hear you, though. Right. Mm. I can kind of hear you loud and clear now, though. You can hear me loud and clear now? Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. All right. That's good, that's good. All right. So what what we what we got tonight? Yeah, brother we have brother Yuya. Um and who's coming on tonight? Um All right. he's also known as Brother Heru. Um he is an initiate priest in the Nigerian Orisha traditions and the Ifa priestly order. Um he is also the chief priest and temple head of Anno Nation where he um, initiates students into the Orisha traditions. Um, the Sahulu House um, Spiritual Center is the name of his school, and he is also the author of Grasping the Roots of Divine Power, Solutions for Dysfunctional Family Relationships. Oh, All right, beautiful. so that's, okay. that's going to be pretty deep. 
That's going to be pretty deep tonight. All right. All right we have Brother you yeah on. Brother, are you yes. here? I'm, I'm here, brothers. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, brother. All right, all right. Thank you for being here, brother. Appreciate you for coming on. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, we're going to get into a lot of information. I've read your bio, and um, it's pretty deep. And so we're going to go into, um, I guess, the Ifa traditions. How would you break that information down specifically as far as um, African religion, how Ifa plays into that? And, of course, I'm pretty sure you've read uh, Wayne Chandler's book, Mm-hmm. Um, ancient future, ancient future, in which sure. he speaks about how the Ifa system was taken into the Orient, known as China and Japan, in which that formed the I Ching principle system, right. um, mm-hmm. in which that it later became. So um, let let's see how let's let's go into that information and for the audience, you know, tell who you are and if there's anything in which that I missed, you know, definitely go deeper, brother. All right, beautiful. Uh, first, of course, you know, I, I want to give appreciation. For you having me and for all of your listeners who tuned in to give me an opportunity to share this information with you all. So I thank you for that. Um, in terms of, of background and my history in this, uh, like many others, I'm just one who has been called to esoteric information, occult information, and I found the Nigerian system of, of Orisha study and Ifa to be more intuitive for me. Uh, I've been doing this for over 20 years, about 22 years, and just different systems, going through various systems and learning and studying and working with people and going through initiation and so forth and so on. Uh, ultimately, though, it's this is just what, I, what was most intuitive for me. Uh, I love many other traditional systems, Sangoma, uh, as well as especially the Congolese system. Uh, as you probably know and your listeners know, the more you study and the more you dig, uh, the more common strings and uh, commonalities you find between systems. So I've exactly. fallen in love with this one, you know, with, with uh, the Eastern Ifa, but I, I love all African indigenous tradition. I love all, all global indigenous tradition. Um, so tonight I'd like to share... Maybe just a little information that hopefully will help people to tie in uh, what Arisha are and what Ifa is with maybe what they're already studying. So they'll have a little bit of, you know, a little extra twist now to add to the work that they're already doing or maybe the the thinking that they're already doing um, just by giving it a different perspective. Um, I want to address you. You asked about uh, how does Ifa play into uh, African religions. Well, uh, firstly, Ifa, uh, the word Ifa, it means to scratch uh, or engrave or to impress upon. And what that basically means is Ifa means to go beneath the surface. Okay, so uh, as most people who are listening, if you're one of those people who just think value and don't really try to digest them or synthesize them or find out the spiritual subcontext to that physical manifestation, then you would not necessarily be dealing with Ifa. Ifa deals with understanding the spiritual or the soulful or the divine subcontext of everything that we experience in our physical and mundane reality. That is Ifa. Um, now, of course, we're told a lot of other things about Ifa as well as Orisha, um, but it's, it's important to understand that these traditions have been invaded by folks who didn't understand them, wasn't trying to understand them. So once that invasion occurred, there was a lot of um, assimilation of external alien information and dogma and doctrine that invaded and now, you know, kind of perverted the language a bit and perverted uh, the concepts a bit. So Mm -hmm. there's nothing spooky about it. Um, At the end of the day, deals with the mathematics of the cosmos, okay? And that mathematics, uh, we know it, it expresses itself through something that we call Odu, which is spelled O-D-U, Odu. And Odu actually means womb, womb, just like a woman's womb. That's what Odu means. 
In the EFA system, we have 256 Odus. Okay, and these are like, um, they're not necessarily scriptures, but they're primal energies. Okay, these right. 256 Odus come from a combination of the primary 16 Odu, which we call the Odu Ifa. Okay, and these were the primordial mm-hmm. energies that showed up on the earth to begin to create womb points around the cosmos. So these are entry points in which you can walk through to create or to leave any any uh, fathomable reality. Okay, and and 256 and there's the stories associated with them, um, rituals associated with them, songs, so forth and so on with each one. So now, uh, based on those particular Odu, you know, uh, the Odu speak about uh, the sciences, the knowledge, the calculations of Ifa. Now, uh, if you if you were to look at an Odu, it almost looks like a binary writing because it uses combinations of light and dark. So you may have the Odu such as um, Obe, O G B E, Obe. That's that's the first Odu. That's number one, and that's written with four lines, four vertical lines, right? And when you have one single vertical line, it represents light. When you have two vertical lines, it represents dark. Okay? And the combination, the different combination of light and dark give rise to the realities. Okay? So, touching on uh, Brother Chandler's uh, work, when he spoke about the E. King associating itself or being a, a child, of the Odu Ifa, that's absolutely correct. Um, there are certain Odu, you know, in, in the E-King, we have primary eight hexagram. And, um, you know, for instance, we have uh, Ogbe, just like I said. And Ogbe associates itself with the hexagram known as Chien, and that's heaven. Okay, that's the that's number one, because everything comes from the subcontext of heaven. That's where everything begins, or what we like to call, refer to as the fifth dimension. Okay, that's the subcontext of everything here on IA or Earth. Okay, and then you have um, even like Erosun, which associates itself with the the hexagram Sun, uh, which is Win. We have uh, Ofun, which associates itself with Khan, which is water. Ed, which is mountain. Oyeku, which is Kun, the Earth. Uh, Omi, which is Chin, thunder. Oshe, which is Li. Fire Iwari, which is Tui, the valley. Okay, so those are the associations with the primary Ifa uh, Odu, connecting them to those different E King. And as you know, the E King, same thing. Uh, you have light lines, or you have solid lines, and then you have broken lines. The solid lines represent masculinity or light. The broken lines represent femininity or receptivity. So that's how those um, how those associate themselves. With one another, uh, when you're dealing with Ifa, you're dealing also with the words of Orumila, Orumila. Okay, now Orumila, uh, Orun means heaven, and Ila, or Ila means diviner. Okay, so Orumila is the diviner of heaven, and what that basically means is Orumila is the one who offers us the direct testimony and the direct direct words from a system who we call one of the names of supreme being being Olodumare. Okay. Um now important in that when you hear the name Olodumare, you hear Ol Odu Mare. Okay. Ol means owner or O means owner and Odu again means womb. Mare means serpent. So Olodumare is the owner of the serpent's womb. So you know when we're dealing with serpents, we're dealing with Kundalini, we're dealing with, with DNA, you know, we're dealing with evolution. So Olodumare represents that first premier starting point of the next step of evolution. That's that's what Olodumare is. Um, very similar to, if we take it to the Kemetic, we have Atum, Atumare. Okay, and Atumare deals with the atomic beginnings. 
Same thing. Atumare Olodumare. It's, it's the same. Okay. So, um, again, Orumila brings us the words, the testimony, the, the, the guidance uh, from Olodumare. And Orumila right, is... To Tahuti or, right, exactly. Similar to Tahuti or Gibral. Similar to Tahuti or Gibral. In the biblical Orumila, way. That's right. Orumila is Tahuti. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Orumila is Tahuti. Orumila is Moses. Orumila is John Henry Clark. Okay. That's it's, right. It's, or Chuck D is Orumila. These were mm-hmm. people who brought the law to us. Orumila represents the law bringers. It's like when Public Enemy came, right. we had we had on stage Eshu and Orumila, or Ilegba and Orumila. We had that fl- flavor right. flavor flavor. He was the door opener. He That's was the right. one that pulled us in. That said, "Oh wow, this looks cool. I want to wear a clock. I want to, you know." And then, mm-hmm. then right behind him, the door open came Moses, or the Lawbringer, or Orumila, or Tahuti, incarnated as Chukti. Okay, so That's same right. same science, you know. Um, so. That's how, you know, Orumila and Ifa and the E-King, you know, how they kind of all associate with each other. It's important to know, too, a common misconception that Orumila is not an Orisha, okay? Um, it's typically taught that uh, you have Oludumari and then everything else is Orisha, and that's not actually correct. Right. Um, you have Oludumari, mm-hmm. or who we call also Eledumari or Odumari. There's many names we use. Um, Olojo Oni, you know, uh, there are direct emanations straight from Olodumare, just like how you have in the, in the Kabbalic system, you have Chokma and Bina, you have those higher Sephiroth. Well, in those higher Sephiroth or in those higher realms, we have Orumila, Odupa, and Obatala. These three are not actually Orisha. Orumila represents mm-hmm. all knowing. Um, Oduduwa represents omnipotency And again you hear that word Odu Oduduwa means the womb of the black woman mm. That's what it means Literally the womb of the black woman Oduduwa okay, And it represents omnipotency Then you have Obatala Oba means king Tala means white cloth So Obatala is the king of the white cloth Not to be mistaken This is the book out uh, by a fellow By the name of Philip Neymar I usually don't call him out by name But I'm going to call him out by name this time He he purports that Obatala means king of the white skin Okay This is completely A lie lie. (laughs) Yeah so I can't say it any better than that Um, Obatala is king of the white cloth And he represents omnipresence Because that white cloth is that prism, that, that fabric that holds all of existence together, okay? Um, and these three, these three individuals or, or emanations are not Orisha. The Orisha come underneath them, okay? So that's, right. that's, that's the tie-in for that, brother. If you want, I could okay. go into okay. more. I could explain the Orisha, what, what Orisha actually are, as opposed to yes, those um, de- definitely explain the Orisha since we, like you said, um, the three are symbolic to the omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, um, mm-hmm. which of course symbolizes, you know, um, the higher powers or right. in the, yeah. you know, the three higher chakras or the bodies in which that survived death, like the um, Aku, the Ba, and the Ka. Uh, yeah, um, exactly. the, the, the all knowing, uh, the, the all powerful, right? Uh, the all right, present, yeah, definitely, you know. right? Def- definitely explain to us um, the Orishas and their role and their function, you know, from the mm-hmm. three. Okay, cool. All right, so again, we have the three, right? And those are direct emanations of Olu Dumare. And then the right. way Olu Dumare, um, Olu Dumare is not the first deity. Oludumare, right. very similar to Kether in our Kabbalah, is the, the, the first attempt to define oneself, the crown. Okay, mm-hmm. and then above that we know right. we have Ein. Okay, Ein represents that yeah. triple stage darkness, Ein, Ein Sof, Ein Sof, or so it's that yeah. that other entity. So when Oludumare came forth and was created, Oludumare created various streams of consciousness. Okay? One of the consciousness that were created was called Ori, which is spelled O-R-I, Ori. 
And then we also right. had Orisha. Okay. Now right. um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get and I'm gonna get to Orisha. I just want to do it in in order. Um, so Orisha mm-hmm. has uh, is is the exact is the spark from Olodumare. It's like in the Bible when it says God breathed into man and man became a living soul. Okay. We have a word in Europe before that, and that's called emi, E-M-I, emi, um, similar to the comedic shoe. Emi is divine breath, okay? And if you right. don't have emi, you don't have a soul. It doesn't mean that you mm-hmm. can't be created. You can be created, and you can look like someone with emi, but if you don't have emi, right. there's, there's no ori, or there's no soul. The ori is synonymous with the soul, Okay? Now, right. the way it works in this tradition, you have the ori, but the ori has no character. The ori has no personality. So because of that, in a sense, um, it has limited potentiality. Okay? The ori is just straight will, and it connects you with your your human character to your divine will. Okay? It's just straight force, like just lightning, but it has no... It has no no it has no flavor <laughs> to it basically. It has no style. Right. Now, so that's why we need here comes the Orisha. The Orisha exists beneath the Ori. Orisha or and I should say this, Ori, the word itself means head. Okay, it means head. Right. Um and you have different mm-hmm. kinds of Ori. You have the Ori Ode. Ode means outer, right. that's the outer head. You have the Ori Inu, which is the inner head, that's your consciousness. Mm-hmm. The Ori Ipako, mm-hmm. which is the um, connection to your Egun or your, your ancestors. The Ori Atari, right. which is that chain link that connects you to your higher self, which is your Ori Iponri. You have your Ori right. Ara, which, which represents mm-hmm. the condensed matter of your physical body. You know, so there's different mm-hmm. forms of how the Ori expresses itself. Similar to the cop, right. right? Now, right. which is all forms of consciousness, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's it's, it's, it's right. a piece and it's a chunk of that supreme consciousness. It's what makes you right. the deity. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now, underneath that, the Ori says, "Okay, I have will, I have drive, but I'm not acclimated to planet Earth. I'm not acclimated to the to the elements on this planet. I'm like a bull in a china shop." I just got all this force and drive, but I don't really know how to how to work it here. So this is where the Orisha come in. Now, Ori, again, means head or consciousness, and Sha means selected or seated, okay? So when you have Orisha, it means the consciousness that is selected. So you mm. basically, you look at your Orisha almost like a menu. You say, okay, well, look. Right. I got all this force, I got all this power, but I need to attract people to me. I need to, to, to attract the energy of congregation. I need Oshun. Oshun brings things together, okay? But she has a certain way that she does it, which I don't really know how because I'm just straight force. So the Ori selects and propels Oshun, the Oshun energy that exists within you, okay, in order to get something done. So I'll, I'll, I'll explain what each Orisha is. Well, the, just the seven major ones that we deal with in the in the diaspora. So it kind of makes more sense as I'm relating it to Ori. You have, um, for instance, Oshun, right? Now, again, always remember, anytime you have the word, I mean, I'm sorry, the letter O or O-L, it signifies ownership. It means owner of. So the, the Shun is the actual piece. Shun means to sing, okay? So, O Shun is the owner of singing, okay? Now, this relates us to our, our, our paradigm. We're dealing with, with the, the making salat, okay? Which is really when you, when you are praying to find God, you're singing into your heart, okay? And you're, you're invigorating that heart chakra, okay? That's the energy of O Shun. O Shun is the... Is the the congregative energy of the, of the cosmos. Oshun is the energy that pulls things together. It's that dark matter that holds things together. That's Oshun. Okay, and then you have, uh, let's say, Ogun, right? And Ogun is the acidic force of the cosmos. Ogun represents acid. Okay, Ogun 
breaks things down. He's an he's analyst. He breaks things down. And what I'm really giving here, you know, as a side note, is more of the exacting definition of these, these Risha. Most of the time when you try to look them up, get real cartoonish. You know, it's like they represent like they're superheroes or cartoon characters. And you don't really get the, the real formula, the mathematics of what they represent, what they're supposed to be used for. Okay, so I'm going right, to, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm going to hit more of that. You know, if you want, like, the, the, you know, the, the cartoon part, that's, you could Google that, you know, for anyone who's listening. You know, you, you'll see pictures of Shun, and she's pretty, she's got a mirror in her hand, and she's playing with her hair and stuff. But all that represents, she represents the joining of forces. So Oshun is responsible for nationalism and tribalism. That's Oshun. Because Oshun joins people together and say, hey, let's all join, let's be this, let's be proud because we're this. That's Oshun. So you have Oshun who he recycles and breaks things down. He's a master economist. Okay, that's why he's represented by the machetes and the wood and, you know, he's cutting new paths and new trails because he's constantly breaking things down. He's acid. Okay, um, now, again, we see that that letter O. O represents ownership. The word Ogun here means herbs. So Ogun is the owner of herbs, and herbs represents vitality. Ogun is the owner of life, vitality. Why? Because Ogun is an Orisha that's over your blood. Okay, he's called the first warrior of blood. All right, um, and that, and also Ogun is iron, which we call Irun. Okay, these are the things that represent the vitality of life of the planet, even. Okay, um, so we have Ogun. Then we have like uh, Shango, right? And Shango represents circumspection. He's the energy of circumspection. His colors very similar. We have Ogun, whose color is red, traditionally. And then, like, in the New World, they made him green, which represented agriculture and money and things. But he's he's actually red. And we'll get into why he's red um, in, in a bit. Uh, but we have Shango. Now, red, just so you know, red represents Ashe. When Ashe activates, it turns red. Okay? Mm. And Ashe is power. It's it's assimilated with chi or prana. It's just it's power. That's right. And when yeah. it turns on, it turns red. When it's in its receptive mode, or when it's what we call Odu, which is the opposite, it's black. So Odu is black, Ashe is red. Okay? So now we have Ogun, he's straight red. That's why he represents all that addiction and virility, because that's just straight Ashe, straight power. Okay? He would be similar to a 50 Cent or a Suge Knight. Uh, Mike Tyson, who even used to call himself the god of war, you know, or Iron Mike. Um, these are incarnations of that Ogun energy, okay? Um, then we have, like I said, Shango. Now, Shango's colors are red and white, okay? So you have a combination here. The white in Yoruba culture we call Fun Fun, F-U-N. And it represents coolness, meditation, but again, it's so we have Shango actually has a combination of when Ogun and Oaxaca they give rise to Shango. Okay? And Shango is circumspection. That's the energy that he represents, just like Haru. Okay? It's, it's that hawk. It's that ability to see things, see everything at one time. Okay, um, mm. that's Shango. Now, he has the red of activated Ashe, but then he has the white coolness of Obatala. That's why when you talk about Shango, they well, he's the king. Even though Ogun is his older brother, he made Shango him because Ogun is just he just keeps going down and stop. Where Shango knows to go, stop, go stop. He's actually more involved. Okay. Then we have... Um, we have Eshu, right? Eshu is, again, um, his colors would be red and black. Okay, again, it goes back to what we were talking about before. The red is activated or Ashe the, is the deepness of the womb, the Odu, okay? And Eshu represents segregation, okay? Eshu is, is, is intellectual capacity. So just like if we were going back, 
back to our um, Kabbalah. He was the sefer of Hold, H O D Hold, that Eshu, we led by. Now, Eshu represents intellectual capacity and segregation. He separates things. This goes here, that goes there. Okay? So, Eshu is responsible for species. Okay? That's Eshu. He's the one who created different species. Now, of course, we're told that Eshu is the crossroads and he's opportunity. You know, when we hear about Elegba, Elegba comes from the Yoruba word Elegbara, Elegbara. And that means a person of great power. Okay? And then, of course, when it came here, you know, things change over time. It became Elegba, then Legba. You know, when you hear like Robert Johnson singing down in the Delta, they sing about Legba, made a deal with the devil at the crossroads, Legba. Mm-hmm. Okay? This is Eshu. Uh, Eshu is Ganesha. Okay? Same energy. Eshu is Loki. Eshu is Pan. Okay? Um Eshu is Lucifer and Jesus, or, or I should say the Christ. Again, if you even look at the word Jesus and you take the J off the front, the S off the back, you have the word Eshu. Okay? Mm. So that is the energy of Eshu. He's the segregative force that says um, either you go here or you go there, but you're going to make a decision. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, he also is called Onibode, and Onibode means the gatekeeper. A perfect representation of Shu is in the movie Thor. When you look at the character that Idris Elba played of Himendal, Himendal was as Shu. He was that only Bode. No one can come through here but by me. Similar to Jesus, no one come to, come to the Father but by me. I'm the truth, the way, and the life. Okay, that is that as Shu energy. Now we also have Oya, which a lot of people hear about Oya, right? And the word Oya means she tears or she tore it. Okay? So it means it in both sing in both senses. Tear as in to cry, because she represents compassion, but it also rep- represents the ripping of things. Okay? Now interesting enough, uh if anyone's familiar with, with like the uh the Buddhist uh paradigm or the Hindu paradigm, Oya is also Kuan Yin and Tara. Tara means uh tears. Same thing. Okay, now we know that Oya is the energy that she represents the supplanting of power. Okay, right. so, you know, we all... We get the word, mm-hmm. That's also where we get the word, um, remember, the humans, based on um, the comedic traditions, Ra um, um, cried his tears in which they formed human beings into existence. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, and the word for that was, yeah, it was Misram, you know, which is the um, children of the light. Yeah, right, mm-hmm. so... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything uh, is everything. <laughs> that's where the Europeans got a lot of their gods, the gods of thunder, the gods of rain. That's right. With energy. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. It comes right. Well, Jehovah comes from Oya. Jehovah right. and Oya, when they were speaking to Jehovah, they were actually speaking to a, a carnation of Oya. Okay. That's why Moses would go up into the cloud to see the cloud, and, and God would speak through a storm cloud. That was Oya coming at that time. Okay. So Oya, again, is the planting of power. If we, we look at it from the hurricanes or tornadoes, the tornado picks up something and moves it somewhere else. It doesn't necessarily totally destroy it. It can, but it usually moves it. Okay, so Oya represents, like, inheritance, um, going into a job, taking somebody's job, you know, stuff like that. That's all Oya's work. Okay, um, and then, of course, we know we have Yemoja. Or, or her full name would be Yeye Omo Eja. Yeye means mother, Omo means child, Eja means fish. Okay, mm-hmm. so we know when we're dealing with Yemoja, we're dealing with that that um the the, the Piscean energy, the Vesica Pisces. Okay, that's that's Yemoja. Okay, but also Yemoja represents instantaneous healing. She sustains the the concept of instantaneous healing. On the planet, her colors being uh, blue and white or blue and silver. Okay, um, she's actually the complement of Shango. Okay, she's actually a complement of, of Shango. But again, Yeye Omo Eja, Yemoja, we more closely related if we go in comedic to um, Newt, the darkness of, of the night sky sustaining the stars. Now we know again from Alistair Crowley. 
you know, that we're all stars. Okay, so we're stars that's, that are suspended in the night sky. Yemoja is the water that suspends the fish in the water. Okay, the same thing. All right, so um, these are just some of the some of the basics. And like I already, you know, told you, Obatala, Orumila. We have Ochosi, who represents astral travel. You know, but these are the actual formulas that we can tap into known as Orisha. So now what happens is going back to that energy of um, of Ori. So Ori says, based on what I need to get done, I'm going to select these different consciousness to get it done. But the key is we always have to understand that because we have Ori inside of us and Orisha are subject to Ori because they're tools that are used by Ori, just worship the tool. That's like going and worshiping a screwdriver. But you have to know when to use a screwdriver, when to use a hammer, when to use a hacksaw. They have different purposes and different reasons, and sometimes you can even combine tools for different results. But if you combine the wrong tools, you might cut yourself. Okay? So that's where a lot of that spookism comes with Risha. Oh, don't put your oil next to Oshun and fight. And don't put this... It, it, that doesn't even exist. Mm-hmm. Okay? It's just... Certain things happen when certain formulas come together. If right. you put Yemoja together with Ogun, you get rust because you're putting salt water with iron. So it rusted. But there's nothing wrong with that because rust represents life. So you just got to know what to do with the rust now because rust also represents blood. And that's something to, to know too. Whenever people are doing rituals and you want to get iron spikes or anything like that, the more rust it has on it, the better. It's been oxidized. That means it has life on it. Okay, so right. um, that's how the Orisha relate themselves to the Ori. And then, of course, after that, you have another string, which are called the Egun. And um, the Egun are our, our ancestors. I can get into that if you want, or we can, you know, definitely I'll give some space. Yeah, we'll definitely get into that, too. Please get into okay. that. Maybe we'll go to a commercial. You know, then we'll come right back with some question and answers. But go ahead, brother. All right, cool. So we have what's called the Egun, and Egun is spelled E-G-U-N, okay? And the Egun are your ancestral energies. Now, it's something really important to understand about Egun, and the word Egun means bone, okay? It means bone. So when we're dealing with the Egun, uh, we got to understand that why we why we know it's they use the word egun knowing that it, it it means bone is because blood is created in the bone in the bone marrow, okay. So when you're serving your egun or giving offering to your egun, in fact, symbolically, metaphysically, and metaphorically, you're giving offering to your own blood, okay. Your egun live inside of your blood. That is that is the secret that our ancestors put on us when they mean that. So that you would understand where we're currently residing at. We're not residing in the realm of the ancestral realm, but it's sharp and invigorating through your blood. That's why it's important to keep clean blood. Okay? The rivers of life going through your body, the rivers of blood, are actually the, the, the walkways and the trapways of the ancestors. Okay? So, again, um, blood is important. Um, the egg uh, that sustains the of the ancestors. We have what's called a boom and a boom boom. And a lot of times, people think that a boom means like one thing, and a boom means a boom thing. A boom means the ancestors, and a boom means the ancestors, and a boom boom is a society. It's a cult that was created. Just like you have the Orisha. Orisha is religion unto itself. Okay, so you have like churches of Ogun, churches of Yemonja, churches of Achosi, blah, 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 churches of Dada, Oba. We could just go on and on and on. They all have their own different systems. And also important to understand that each Orisha has its own realm of heaven and its own realm of, he- of hell. Each Orisha is a realm unto itself. So, for instance, you have Ogun. Ogun's heaven would be expansion, um, money fortune, moving forward with vitality and virility, Ogun's hell would be constant, senseless violence, um, isolation, depression, you know, being taken advantage of. 
So there's a heaven and hell or polarity to each one of these regions. The Egun have something similar. So we have what's called the Egungun cult. And they are priests or priestesses that reside and work just with the energy to maintain their strength and liberty. Because they're going through their own and their own, just like we're going through here. And the Egun or, or, or the ancestral realm is not necessarily the, uh, the target. When we, when we, as you know, when we leave, when we transition to space, we don't want to go to the Egun realm. We go to the Egun realm, and unless we have a progeny who's still here on Earth, who's doing some heavy spiritual work, we have to come back. Our progeny who are left here, we're in the ancestral realm. They still have us in their blood. So if they're doing some, some heavy work and they're raising their vibration and they're changing their awareness, they actually can take us with them because we're in their blood. But if we we leave and all left behind was a bunch of dead heads, we're going to have to come back and do it again. Okay, so the own realm, the ancestral realm, is not, it shouldn't be what you're aiming for. You should be aiming to get back home, which is what we call in this tradition, the Okan. Okan means heart. Okay. And that's where your, or where your soul resides. In this tradition, it's the Okan. You have various realms. You have Aie, which is earth, Okan, the heart, um, Orun, is heaven, and it's the several other dimensions and realms. I didn't want to keep going. I know you have a commercial you need to hit to, but I, this, I can go. But, you know, you, you got eight minutes, brother. You can definitely go, but hold on. Let's let's go to it then. Mm-hmm. You'll come right back. All right. Just spreading the world, the of bombs, 
But what about the witchcraft that tears the yard? The climate is changing, the media forgot to mention. It's a coincidence we had a sense of proof to mention. Today, it let my words carry you far. Mother, it's a way right back to the start. All right, we back. Um, definitely continue, and we're gonna go to the phone lines. Um, but I know there was another aspect that you wanted to break down before we go to phone. So please continue. Okay. Well, uh, when we right before we broke, we were speaking about just the realms of of the egum, or, or again the the ancestors, and how um, the different manifestations. So so far, we've already got. You know, we have Ori, we have Oludumare, we have the energy behind Oludumare, we have the Ori, we have Orisha, and we have uh, Egun. Okay, these are all different strings of streams of cognition that come from what we like to call the Supreme Being or, or Atumare. Okay, um, there was there was a point that's important to understand too when we're dealing with the Egun and there's, a, there's an energy or a concept that we speak about in Yoruba uh, or I should say in Ifa and Orisha tradition known as Ojiji okay and that's O-J-I-J-I okay Ojiji and Ojiji is the coherent force of the physical body okay um, just like early when I was speaking about the Ori and I said we have the Ori Ara and the ara is the physical body or what we can call um, gross matter energy. So the ara or the body is your gross matter. And the, the ojiji is more like your electromagnetic energy. Okay. Ojiji lives inside of the blood. But it's, it's really readily tapped into. Um, ojiji also lives within your shadow. Now go back to our comedic studies and again when we're dealing with the shadow energy. The OGG is uh be fire. Now, an important point to understand when we're dealing with um, ancestors or sometimes when we think we're communicating with ancestors and things like that um, is to understand how OGG dissipates and how it's strengthened. Okay, uh, very interesting that OGG being like the shadow on the ground, uh, if anybody is familiar with stories surrounding the bombing of Hiroshima, Okay, um, there were reports that three days after the bombing of Hiroshima, that the build, the build the shadows of the buildings were still on the ground, and mm. people they couldn't figure out why. Okay, now obviously, as you know, when something shocks and hits the universe in such a, uh, an instant like that, that it takes a moment, just like. Sometimes when people transition and it's a rainstorm and you go over to the cemetery, you still see the bodies, the, the, the spirits or the OGG, what we call it, floating over the body. Okay, it hasn't disconnected right. from the chain yet. Okay, the same right. thing happened in Hiroshima. There was it, it, those shadow, that shadow power didn't disconnect from the chain of the gross matter manifestation of those buildings. Now, OGG is dissipated under the sun. Okay, so in sunlight, Ojiji dissipates. Also, Ojiji dissipates in front of mirrors. You put Ojiji in front of a mirror, it begins to, to dissipate. Garlic does the same thing to Ojiji because garlic thins out the blood. So it dissipates Ojiji. Now, if anybody has already picked up on it, I just described to you many the trait, three traits of the vampire. Okay. okay, that vampire energy. The vampire has no shadow on the ground. It, it has no right. reflection in the mirror, and it can't be around the garlic. Okay, so this is very similar to what, what the brother said earlier about these concepts being taken and, and rehashed and then spookified, of course. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, and I, I just need to hit the OGG piece, because a lot of times when we think that we're communicating with our Agun or our ancestors, we're dealing with, we're, we're a lot of times we're communicating with someone's OGG body that is just, that needs some Ashe to manifest. Okay. Um, right. Blood is so Ashe. Yes, this is carnated, right, it's similar right. to a shell or a discarnated spirit. Also. Right. Exactly. 
Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, and then you have you have fake Arisha, which is similar right. in the same instance. Um, and a lot of this comes from the not only just the spookification, but you know when things are anthropomorphized to the point that we no longer understand the divine nature of them, we only see them as humans. Then we look for some type of sensual experience when connecting with them. So we connect with the Shango or Oshuna or Ogun. We want to feel something without really understanding that these are entities that never felt anything. They didn't, you know, it's in many traditions they teach you that these were your Arisha were ancestors that um they they lived such a, a, a an exacting life to their character that they were transitioned and elevated to the, the place of ancestors. I mean I'm sorry, Arisha. This is actually not accurate. Now, we can make someone an an Arisha, just like those Arishas were created based on that's true. Our collective energy towards them because the Orisha exist on a certain plane and then they stop. They don't exist on the soul level. Okay, they they there they, they it's a different thing going on. So just like you, you go to certain parts of the world, I know especially in in Brazil, uh, Gandhi is now an Orisha. You know, and he's uh, giving offerings and everything just like if he was any other being. Is Gandhi? You know um, now. now can that be? Can there something come from that? Of course, because you're feeding the OG this concept of this of this idea, and it's something that sits there for you to later tap into right. it. Right. right. Um, it's a thought form, and that's what right. the Orishas mm-hmm. are. They're thought forms. So at the end of the day, what that means also is this: you don't need the Orisha. Okay. Right. Um, you can use them. You can employ them, but you don't need them. You actually don't need anything but your own ori. That's the only entity you really need to work with. That's your soul. Because every soul comes here with a mission from Oludumare. Mm-hmm. And Oludumare, right. as a hookup, gave us all these different primal energies to help us climb Jacob's ladder to get back home. But you don't actually need to use them. They're just... There. So even people a lot of times go to their Egun and say, well, I'm going to see if my Egun will help. Your Egun are there for one reason in terms of what they do for you. What they do for you is they lay um, empathetic and somatic information to Orisha. That's all they do. So when you are walking in your bedroom at night and you stub your toe on your bedpost and you pray to Oshun, to make the pain, the pain go away, Oshun says, I never had a, 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 a total stuff. I don't know what you're talking about. So you see a goon to relay the information because they had their toe stub before. So what it is that they do right. is they, they, relay, they had a physical body. They relay that sensory experience back to the Orisha. So that is really more, again, the the, the purpose of, of that goon energy. Um and there's different ways. When you learn how to master your OGG, this is where we hear reports in Nigeria of people shape-shifting. Um, right. OGG forms the gross matter body. So once you learn how to really master it, you can form a different gross matter body, however you decide to. And, um, you know, there's different ways that you can work with your OGG, deep breathing, um, affirmations, things like that. Um but that's you know, I have you ever heard of that. Simon? Have you ever heard of Simeon Toko? No, no I haven't. Um, it's from the tales of what is known as um, Fatima, the um, the tales of Fatima, um, okay. coming from the Catholic okay. Church, in which that's from out of Angola, um, out of the Congo, um. Back in the um, early 1900s, well, late, well, mid 1900s to, I think he lived from, yeah, mid 1900s to 1984. But it is said and reported that he was able to project a thousand brown angels, you know, what is known as the, um, similar to like the Twa. They were mm-hmm. very muscular and um, dementive. You know what I'm saying? And 
one was able to lift up a um, two-ton, no, I think a five-ton truck with one hand. Mm. Mm-hmm. Get over. Mm-hmm. You know, um, um, let's talk about that because you were talking about um, building um, the body. You know, obviously that's building also the body of light. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I would think that's probably part of the cool, which is the glorified light body, you know, of an individual. I mean, how do you see that? Okay, well, again, that kind of goes to mastering that OGG energy. Okay, um, right. understanding, once we understand, and that's, this is why we're kind of really speaking about the science of Orisha, not, not the cartoon mm-hmm. of Orisha. Exactly. Because once you... Yeah, once you understand the science, then you start saying, you start, you can create your own, you could do reverse engineering. Oh, this is how I was assembled. So mm-hmm. how can I disassemble mm-hmm. myself? Okay. Right. And there is an exact Odoo that deals with this assemblage, and that's the Odoo of O'Shea, O-S-E. And O'Shea deals with um, decompiling yourself or just decompiling things, period. And then you have Ofun that deals with compiling, which is the last Odoo. Okay, but um, yeah, when we're talking about decompiling, that's really beyond uh, the pay grade of Arisha. Okay, now we're going into a place where you're going back into the Okan realm, and there were reports of things like that. Now, but here's here's the here's the issue with that. Um, there were reports of people going back into the Okan realm and coming back different. You know, um, I spoke to a lot of Awo. Awo is, is the name that we use for, like, priests or just, you know, spirit workers, people who are into the sciences. And um, they would talk about their grandfathers and grandmothers walking into rocks, you know, walking into the water, you know, walking into the side of cliff and just walking right oh. through it. <laughs> you see? Um, because they they saw, it's like the, the matrix. They saw the code. They saw how to decompile the code, the binary. You know, um, so that's absolutely possible, you know, uh, the decompiling of, of reality because your reality is orchestrated by what we call our, our Ori Essentiae. Now, this is, um, Ori is also called your destiny, right? And when you come to the planet, you have a certain destiny that's orchestrated by your soul. But once you can tap back into that soul level, because there's really no time for this, you know, and what I mean by that, there's no set time to say, okay, you already did this, and then an hour later you came out of your mother's womb. Okay, it doesn't really work like that. Even the creation story uh, of the Yoruba, where it's you know the um, Orumila coming down on the chain and, and dropping the sand, and, the, and the, we don't really have a time scale for this. So that tells us that this is a continuous process. So the world. The human is continuously being formed. So if you can tap into that soul energy, you can go renegotiate the terms of your creation and say, okay, see, I start, I see you started making me like this. Okay, cool. But tell you what, let's try this. Let's try a little bit. Of, let's try a little bit of that. Mm-hmm. Okay, you can renegotiate it because at the end of the day, you have Emi inside of you, the divine spark of Oludumare. All of these entities that are responsible for the evolution and and the creation of gross matter and the things like we're speaking about, lifting five-ton trucks, you actually, they are actually at your command. It's like the genie in the bottle, Aladdin, you know, rubbing, polishing that pineal or polishing that lamp and the genie coming out and saying, hey, you know, what do you want me to do? You know, your your wish is my command. The Orisha, that's exactly what they are. They are genies in the bottle. You go above them and say, you know what? Not only do I want to create a different perceived reality which is dealing with you know what's seen that kether i want to create a, a different subcontext reality the subtle energy i want to change the spirit you know of something and totally rearrange its mole- molecules and that's when you start tapping into and becoming olu du mare or atum mare dealing with the atoms and that's why you can lift a five-ton truck because you're you're now expressing yourself on the planet as the supreme intelligence. Excellent, brother. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, this this is um, one of the yeah, best wonderful. breakdowns that we have had. Um, let me go to the four zero four four zero four. You're on the line.
Greetings. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Yes. Greetings, brother. Uh, brother Waters here in Jacksonville, Florida. I just, I don't have much to say. The brother has broken it down. Uh, it couldn't have been said any better. Uh, I appreciate your knowledge and your wisdom. Uh, can you explain a little bit about the Odu of Obara Meiji for a second? Sure, not a problem. Um, okay. Obara Meiji, okay, is um, a part of that uh, 16 major Odu. We're talking about the primary Odu. And Obara means to wake up and see. Okay, now, of course, the Odu express themselves, depending on the situation, it can mean something different. And that's when you get into, you know, understanding the, the movement of the energy, but Obara sustains the idea of the king of lightning. Okay. In, in the Yoruba, we have a term ra-ra, right? And ra-ra actually means lightning. Okay. So when you have Obara, you have Oba and you have ra. So you have king and you have lightning. Now, if you think about what Obara means, you know, um, the definitive definition is to wake up and see. Wake up and see. This goes back to what Brother Aleem just mentioned about the light body. Okay, mm -hmm. we're dealing with lightning here. We're dealing with Shango. Okay, so when lightning hits, that, that quick flash, pow, Obara deals with that, that, that first um, instance of seeing what's around you, that circumspection. So whenever you, you see that Odu of Obara Meji, I want you to picture yourself on a hilltop and you're in a storm. And the lightning hits, and the moment that that lightning hits, you see a bunch of wild animals around you, and then it gets dark again. Okay? That's the energy of Obara Meji. Um, also, Obara Meji deals with the sustaining of your memory. So if you have memory issues, what you can do is, um, like, you could take ginkgo caloba and you smash right. it up, right? Smash it up into into a powder, and then you you draw that that Odu of Obara Meji, you put it on a plate with that herb, okay? And then you just, you affirm over it. You know, you affirm that your memory be restored, that your mind be restored, and it be tightened up. You be given back your gift of illumination that you came into the world with, and then you ingest it. You put it in some water and you ingest it over a couple of days, okay? So that's what that Odu was dealing with. I appreciate it. That Odu was marked for me in uh, Oyo. In Nigeria, just a few days ago, and I've been kind of studying the old Duke, and I really do appreciate uh, your input uh, you on a whole another level. On a whole another level, brother, I really appreciate you, and may the ancestors again keep you. And just speaking of the ancestors, um, the question you clarified some some things about Egun. Uh, you know, through the diaspora, um, it, it it's kind of been changed up. You look in Brazil, you look in Cuba and see the Lukumi <clears throat> systems, and they don't do a whole lot of the Egun masquerade. And uh, mm -hmm. you just gave me some insight on how we should be dealing with Egun. Uh, you know, you said sometimes uh, we think we'd be dealing with Egun, we'd be dealing a whole different level. Pags. Uh, you know, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So <laughs> but we have to be careful. Uh, I appreciate your time and effort. And um, Brother Eileen and your wife, uh, I appreciate you all again. Thank you. Have a good no, night. No, no doubt, Brother Wayne. Right, peace. No doubt, peace. Brother Wayne. I appreciate you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, them hags, those, um, you know, those hags, as we say, um, also a symbolic two familiars mentioned within the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's what the scripture refer to them as because they compose themselves as being um, an ancestor. Um, let's go to area code 831. Area code 831, you're on the line. Hi. Hey, how you doing, brothers, everybody? Bodhi uh -huh. Jenkins and Y Via uh -huh. Cali. Um, awesome show. I'm blown away. I was wondering, brother, if you could break down um, the metaphysics behind Met Cal Fu. Uh, I believe that's the proper, I don't know, uh, it's uh, Egbara's like, twin uh, of the crossroads. Or, I uh, Mm. Okay, I'm not I'm not that familiar with that, brother. Could you give me a little bit more information? Um, yeah, there's not a lot. Uh I've been doing a lot of reads for some reason. I don't know how I came about it, but I've been drawn to that energy or working with that energy anyway. And uh from what I understand it's it's Legba's twin. 
Um, but he's the, I guess you could say the shadow of Legba. He's a, a Petro uh, Loa. And that's pretty much all I know. Right. I've been searching okay. All yeah. Over. yeah. Okay, yeah, you're dealing with Luau. Okay, All right. um, now you know the Luau. You're dealing with the Vodun, and the Arisha. Obviously, you're dealing with well, the Arisha. Um, what that energy is, what you're dealing with, that's an energy that deals with um, math. That's more the intellectual aspect, okay, okay. of Legba. All right. So whenever that energy comes up or that that name comes up, that's dealing with. Uh, mastering that balance between masculine and feminine inside your head. Now, when you see some of the images of that one, if you look closely, you're going to notice there's going to be an erect penis and breast on those mm-hmm. images that are drawn. Okay? Now, that, so that particular energy, is, it deals with the science of androgyny. Okay? Okay. Now, okay. what that represents, that, like, but it's, not, it's actually not led by uh, shadow. That's just a, it's just a form. It's just an aspect of your leg by. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, what that's dealing with is not only the energies of creation, but that push and pull of time and space. Okay, mm-hmm. and it's it's what it's urging you to do is master time and space. Okay, that masculine energy represents the time, the feminine represents the space, and the me- mm-hmm. it's, it's 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 the mastering of that, the mastering of time and space. Okay, so that's, again, left and right brain hemispheres. So that's what you really want to start working with. When that comes up, you got to get into some Zen meditation. Okay, okay. Right. Yeah, and that's right. funny because that's what I've been doing. I've been doing, like, a lot of trance work lately, mm-hmm. uh, a lot, you know, just, just for the fact of going into trance and learning how things feel when you're in different, uh, you know, different levels of mind and stuff like that. But that's that's. That's that's money right there. Okay. Yeah. Mind magic. It. No problem. Mind Every, everything ain't dealing with, you know, cracking open a coconut and, and doing right. lighting some candles. You know, the the brain got got some, some stuff with it too. <laughs> you know, so you, yeah. you wanna yeah, yeah. use your mind yeah. magic. So that's telling you that, that you one of the mind workers. Okay, so you All work right. that magic. Yeah. All right. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Sure, my Much pleasure. Much love to everybody. Peace. Right. You still here? Yeah, I'm here, brother. We going through the phone lines? Or... Darlene? Hello? Oh, I think we might have lost him. We could have. Oh. We just get, we just get back on. Okay. All right. Well, one of the things um, the brother just brought up, um, dealing mm-hmm. with the Bodum and the, the Luau, and it's a, you know, I think there's a lot of controversy that comes up sometimes. Um, over the mixing of systems, as as we'll call it, you know, when you're mm-hmm. dealing with with Vudun or even like Lukumi or Santoria, where there's, you know, you have the saints and then you have the Orisha, and it's important to always understand that um, Orisha are evolutionary forces, so they're supposed to change. You know, you're supposed to, you know, look at Muhammad Ali and say, oh Shango, or Mike mm-hmm. Tyson and say, oh Ogun. You know, um, Earth the Kid, oh, Oya. You know, these these things are supposed to happen. You're supposed to evolve the perspective and evolve the view. You know, so it's excellent. Like, you know, the question the brother asked, he didn't even ask, you know, from a voodoo perspective. He just threw it in. And um, that's one of the things that we have to start doing, especially when it comes to technology. Um, these These sciences are directly linked to things like nanotechnology, you know, um, thermonucleodynamics. These, all of these, these different principles were founded upon these these negotiations that our ancestors made with the cosmos to understand how electricity moves. You know, how wind moves in the body when we're dealing with um, when we're dealing with energies like Oya, or as some called it, Jehovah, or storm mm-hmm. from the accident. Um there's also a piece that I wanted to share with the brother who calls and asks about um, Obara Miji. And I also want to share that the word bara, 
itself means word power. Okay, and it is said in the Yoruba tradition that bara sets odu into action. Okay, so before you have any type of um, any type of true activation of ashe, there's an there's an odu. There's there's something. The odu represents like a chakra point. It's like a womb to the galaxy. Mm. So, you know um, that odu. So you you have but you have to open it. It's like you got to know the password. You know, open sesame. You know, mm-hmm. that type of abracadabra type stuff. You know, now having the ability or the spiritual authority is called bara, bara, word power. Okay, mm-hmm. so that's something that um, for the brother, if that old dude came up for you, what you want to begin to start cultivating is more bara, is more word power. Uh, one of the things you want to do is as you're meditating, as you're doing your chants, you want to do it with a little guinea pepper in your mouth. They also call it alligator pepper, or it's also called grains of paradise. Okay, All right. And that increases the your, your ashe as you're speaking, you know. And that's for anybody doing prayers, or anything. You know, just give it a try. It's a little right. hot, you know, so you know it's not going to burn you, but just be prepared. It's a, it's a little hot. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, also, I wanted to touch upon for those who also might have uh, other questions about different odus to understand. I just want to give you kind of, I guess I thought about the basic, um, not meaning, but the basic direction that each Odu takes us in. And we'll just deal with the first 16, the Odu Ifa, uh, the Meriden Logun, which is 16, the 16 Odu. Now, we know um, our first Odu is Obey, O-G-E, Obey. And it's said just like that, Obey. you got to stay with some, some conviction. Okay, when the, when the uh, colonialists, uh, and the invaders came over to Nigeria. What they did was they removed the hard, the hard consonants out of the language. Because those hard consonants, they mean a lot. This is a temple language when you're dealing, when you're calling for these different energies. And you've got to work a lot harder if you're not using the right codes. Okay, right. but Obedin, that first premier Odu, represents um, infinity, going into the, the infinite. And it's its polar complement is Oyeku, O-Y-E-K-U. And Oyeku means the science of death. And Oyeku represents the void, okay, or or to to, uh, to go into non-existence. Okay, so you have Ogbe and Oyeku, and they play off of each other, and they give rise to other enemy, energies, okay? And then you have um, you have uh, E-D. And O-D represents, again, we were talking about the gross matter about body, or the condensation of matter, or having molecules contract upon themselves and solidifying into something material, or the mother. This is ED. ED is actually represented by the image of a woman's behind, okay, which represents your foundations in life. And its opposite, or its polar opposite, would be Iwari. In Iwari, Shango exists, and Iwari represents your expansion, Moving into the into into space, into infinite empty space to expand yourself. So ED is your contraction, Iwari is your expansion. Okay, and um, and when we go from there, we have um, like Irosun, I- 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 you know, and Irosun I- deals with um, its energy. It's a strong energy, it's, but it's, it's letting energy flow. It's letting energy move. Um, very similar to water. Now, of course, if you notice, if you're soon to spell I-R-O, as you in, take the I-R-O and you have Oshun. Oshun is, is the, the the patron of fresh water. You deal with that flow of energy, things flow, especially when you have obstacles. You throw the boat into a river, the water will go around it. It's not even there. Okay, so it's the flowing things. And this polar complement would be a wound ring. A wound ring deals with the um, documentation of energy, not mm-hmm. necessarily letting it flow, freezing it down, very similar to a flash of lightning, right? Of lightning. Right in that moment when that lightning flashes, we just see an image, frozen in time almost, and then it goes. Okay, so a wound ring deals with the caging in, the containment of, of, um, of energy. And then we have uh, uh, Obara. Brother asked about Obara Meiji. Obara deals with um, the desire to be. So Obara deals with finding your identity, 
That's why we, I said it means literally to wake up and see, mm-hmm. because you're it's like Sawubana, Sawubona, which is the the Zulu term for you know it's a greeting, but Sawubona means I see you, as stolen from you know as stolen in the, the movie The Avatar, James Cameron. That right. I, I see, yeah, right. that comes from Sawubona, okay, and that's that Obara Meiji. It means to be, or or to you know to identify Kui Chakalia. And then we have um, its its polar opposite would be Okanran. Now Okanran, in that you notice you have the word Okan, and I told you earlier that the Ori exists in the realm known as Okan. That's the heart realm. And Okanran means to know. So the polar complement of being is knowing. Okay, it's going into awareness. Now it's very interesting because when you're dealing with the heart or the Okan, you're dealing with the heart chakra your middle point and it's that middle point of indifference where you say these are these are the these are the truths that I know, the brutal truths that I know. That's why Ogun actually lives in the heart chakra. He's the brutal truth of knowing. Okay. Um then, you know, you have Ogunda, okay, and Ogunda deals with um the things that we that we cement ourselves to in life. Ogun Incarnate in that particular Odu, but it deals with your your anchor points in life, okay, your set points, and its polar complement would be Osha, O S A. That's where Oya lives, and that deals with um, unlinking yourself to things. You know, taking it as it goes, kind of like a tornado. We just gonna move with the wind. I go where I please, and I want. Whereas mm-hmm. Ogun is iron, where it's like, no, you're gonna stay here. You're gonna anchor here. It's an anchor. I'm going to use an iron anchor, okay? Um, and then, you know, we're dealing with the energy of, like, um, Ogunda. We have Ika. Uh, Ika deals with your sustaining of your physical body, okay, um, and which could also mean sickness. And then its polar complement would be, would be Oturapon. Oturapon deals with the releasing of your physical body, desiring to live as an immaterial spirit, body, desiring to move away from mother or move away from matter. That's Otura poem. Okay, um, we also have Otura. Otura deals with um, to affinitize and congregate. That's that love energy. It is said that the religion of Islam came from the chakra point of Otura, that mm-hmm. it was born from Otura. Okay, right. and then we have um, Irete. Irete deals with um, Freeing yourself from the attachments of life, detaching from your human thought, from human reality. That's dealing with Irete. Usually when people are incarnated with Irete, that's people who are kind of like oddballs, you know, as we would call them. People who mm-hmm. just kind of march to the beat of their own drum. Then you have Oshe, which deals with um, compiling or creating things. Um, this deals with fire and also deals with initiation into higher societies and knowings, like initiating into hermetics will come under under Oshe. And then we have Ofun, which deals with the decompiling or or create or or disrupting things, breaking them apart. And that would be the final Odu. So I just kinda wanted to sh- to share some insight for people who, you know, um, may have been born or had got readings under those Odus of what they mean in their, their more primal and base base right. selves. Mm-hmm. You know. Right. Right. Excellent. Excellent. Let's go back to the phone lines. We got area code eight one eight. Area code eight one eight. You on the line? Good evening, gentlemen. Good, Good evening. evening. You got it. I'd like to thank you for uh, bringing this very esteemed guest to our attention. And I have two questions. One is, how long have you been practicing? Uh, and number two is, how far have you been able to? get uh, and manifest the higher levels of reality into your life. Okay. Um, Well, I've been practicing for over 20 years, um, but I have to honestly say, you know, formally, but I have to honestly say I was born practicing. You know, I I never really had a a wake-up point, you know, like, like many people have where they just have that cathartic experience and they decide to change their life around. Um, as a child, I was doing rituals and readings. You know, um, it just took me a little longer. Cause I had a little, 
little child's brain, you know, to learn how to articulate what I was actually doing. But I've always been um, setting fires and seeing faces inside the fires, praying over the water and, you know, pouring it on, on myself and my brothers and stuff like that, you know. Um, so I came into it with that. So I'm one of those people who messed up and had to keep coming back to the planet, you know. So I was obviously already a Babala in my last life. And I came back with that consciousness because I messed something up somewhere along the way. Okay. Um, now, as far as your second piece, um, I can say that I've been able to manifest anything that I've desired to manifest. But as I as I mature and I learn more things, I'm learning um, a, a more varied breadth of what I want to manifest. Okay. So there really hasn't been anything that I've not been able to, to do uh, as far as things that I've wanted to do, but I can't, I don't really know what, what the limit is, the levels, you know, of consciousness into my reality. Um, I don't know what that, what that, that ceiling is as of yet. So I'm more kind of aimed there more so than manifestation here. I'm more pushing all of the energy and the ashe I get, I push it back up to my, my higher self, my Ori Iparin, you know, as opposed to pushing it back down to me. Because this is temporal, you know. Um, so I've pretty much been able to do what I want to do. But the more I learn and the more I grow, the, the less I want to do, the less I want. I don't really want to hit the lottery at this point or, you know, have 500 wives. That's just not really my aim, you know. Well, it seems to me that, uh, and maybe you could address this, uh, that we get so bogged down in the minutia of life, mm -hmm. you have to wonder just to make a living and to, you know, keep a roof over our heads and food in our mouths, which are basic human survival things, uh, that what was the purpose in us being here and then having us to the point where we're at a survival level all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, the, the purpose in being here is unique. You know, my purpose, I, you know, I might go outside of my house tonight to take my garbage out and get ran over by a truck. You know, my purpose may have been only to just tell you what I just told you. You know, so it's, it's unique for each and every one of us. Um, in terms of that survival and utility mode, that's typically based on um, what we consider our creature comforts and our needs to be. You know, you have people who have no homes and they wander or they sleep in national parks and shacks and makeshift tents, and they're much more free, you know, than someone at a car with a, with a full tank of gas. You know, so it, it, it really is, is a personal preference it's the, it's that attachment to this reality that makes us feel that we need to have all of those things or that that um sustaining and cultivating over cultivating and over development of that root chakra where we're we're constantly impressed upon us impressing upon ourselves the needs of our physical environment which it's just not you know that's not really the case there's this technology and there's so many different things nowadays um, living off the grid is an option where we don't really need to be as focused on the petty aspects of utility survival. You know, you can live for free. You can grow your own food, and that, that frees up more time to do other things. Um, it's more important to have money to blow than to have money to save Because if, if you're dealing with money. Because if you got money to blow, then you got money to to corrupt mm -hmm. yourself. And you came here, part of the purpose you came here for was to be corrupted, was to be a flesh human being and to take that, that experience and information and wisdom of corruption back up to Olodumare, you hmm. know. Um, so coming here and saying, well, I do the right thing. I pay all my bills. I do this. I don't go anywhere. To, you're doing the wrong thing. If that was the case, you could have just stayed in the Garden of Eden if you just wanted to be a robot. Okay. You know, okay. came here to live. Yeah. Okay. That would be my answer to that. Thank you very much. Good night. Well, Thank you. Good night. All right, for those that want to call in, it's 626-414-3535. That's 
3535. Give us a call. Go on the phone, area code 404-404. You're on the line. Uh, yes, greetings to you, greetings. brother. Greetings. Uh, I was listening to the show, and I have no idea what you're talking about, the old goal or, or any of that. Uh, mm. But it sounds like higher spiritual technologies to me. And um, I've been practicing higher spiritual technologies for about 15 years. You've been practicing it for about 20 years. Uh, based on what you said to one of the prior callers, and and I just want to ask you, can can you perform any type of supernatural powers, telekinesis, uh, teleportation, uh, touch healing, distant healing, well, or telekinesis? Well, of course. There's, those are things that I do on a daily. I work with a lot of different people. Um, as far as some of the things that we would call supernatural, I I don't really consider it to be supernatural. Um, it's just me being who I am. And that's, that goes back to, again, that old duo of Obara, being yourself. Um, so every day I figure out word, ways to become more of myself. And the Ogun and the things that you were speaking about, those Orisha, what those are, are those, those, those are images, reflections, and blueprints to the different things that we can do to who we are. So when you talk about long distance healing or um, like even astral projection, well, the concept is taught to us through the Orisha Ochosi, who's a hunter. Okay, and then the more we learn about this particular Orisha, the more we learn about the things that we have inside of us, the things that we can do. Okay, so um, there's a lot of things that I do every day. Teleportation, um, no, I don't really have an interest in that right now. Um, it doesn't, for, for what I need, it's not as relevant. But there are some other things that I do on a daily that people call miraculous that I consider to be a part of what we all can do once we learn all the different components that are inside of us and the different consciousness that we can select. You can select to be that energy that astral projects. You can select to be that energy that understands uh, telepathy. You can select to be that healing energy of Yemoja. You can select to be these things. So we all have that so, potential. So they have uh, uh, within what you're describing and talking about is I want to know how to teleport. I can learn it from from your school. Meaning you, you you have a step by step formula of how to teleport. You do this, 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 and you will teleport. Well, brother, no, I don't teach people how to teleport because I don't really see the relevance in it. So, you know, what I teach people is things that, you know, from my own experience, what I consider to be necessary for our own spiritual liberation. Um, now, if I find that that's a necessary component and I need to add that to my curriculum, then that's what I would do. But the truth is there really is no step-by-step -step formula for teleportation. Some people come into the world with different gifts. Some people come into the world with that gift, okay? Um, some people can just look into a crystal and then put themselves somewhere else. Some people can do it by eating something. Some people can do it by smelling frankincense, okay? Yeah. So what I really deal with is education more so than training. If I was to teach step-by-step -step ways of how to do certain spiritual um, feats and tricks, then I would be training people, and that really is worth nothing. But what I do is I educate people to bring out those gifts that they came into the world with and to amplify and enhance those. Some of those gifts I may not even have myself, but that's the job of a, of a, of a good educator coming from the, the Greek word educar, meaning to bring forth. The good job of an educator is to bring forth that specialness that we all have inside of us. Um, if it's teleportation, then I'll work with you in that, but I don't really need to give you a step-by-step. -step. I just need to teach you how to get to your soul level and the point to be revealed to you your own step-by-step. -step. Okay. Now, you know, I know you just mentioned that there is no step-by-step -step formula to teleportation. And, you know, I've been practicing this, and I've learned from different scientists and shamans, you know, from around the world, and they gave me a step-by-step -step formula to do, you know, distant healing, mm -hmm. and I followed that step-by-step -step formula and performed it. 
Uh, I did the same thing for telekinesis. I've, I've actually have demonstrated and done these things because, you know, I'm always looking to acquire more and more high spiritual technologies, say being it is technologies, you know, that's just where my mindset is. What exactly do you and use those things for? Say that again? What exactly do you use those things for? The telekinesis and, and the, the teleportation? Okay. For, uh, for example, uh, I was walking down the street with my son, uh, for protection <laughs> example. Uh, uh, I'm walking down the street with my son, and this big German shepherd comes charging out. And <laughs> I get in I get in my position, I project energy at the German shepherd and he gets flung back without me even touching him. Mhm. That's a that's a purpose I use it for. Okay. That's excellent. And, uh, um you know, like self protection, self healing, uh um to be protected not only physically but but even spiritually against, you know, anybody trying to curl black magic or run game on you. You know, if you protect yourself and put the protection power and chant the names of God, you're going to have the protection power around you anyway. Yeah, see, the thing is, though, brother, we all come in at different levels, though. You know, for some of us, the dog wouldn't have even seen us because our vibration is, is at a level where that dog wouldn't have even known that we were there. Okay, so depending on the level, at that, you may need a step-by-step instruction, you know, and that's, there's, there's a level. It's just like some people, when they first come into the knowledge, they have to come through the Christian church or, or they have to come through the mosque because they have to be put in a position first where you can have a reasonable conversation with them. They may be strung out on drugs, you know, so they need something to get them acclimated to a certain thing. So there's different steps, you know, um, if you look at the movie The Game of Death with Bruce Lee, you find that at the highest level, there are no steps. There is no style. Okay? And so that's really what I kind of aim at. I try to get people in that space where they develop their own style as opposed to telling them, well, this is how this is done. That's that's how that done. This is the name of God. Because God is an evolving being. God is coming up with new names every second. You know, um, that can be revealed to the individual. Now, I was saying that that can be revealed to the yeah, individual. Yeah, one thing I understand, you know, is that hello. Yeah, I'm here. Bro. Hello. I'm like hearing some background noise. Okay, but you know, one thing I understand is, you know, when you get knowledge and you learn knowledge, you you take it and you create with it. You know, that that's what you're supposed to do. You create with. It. You know, you be a creator and create with it. But definitely we need to be on the higher spiritual technologies. I I see what you're talking about as a higher spiritual technology. So, you know, I I just stay on that path. You know, I'll stay on stay on the path I'm on, but you know, I don't really know much about the the old goon or anything like that. But is there a difference between saying something in one language and saying something in another language, or is the intent all that's needed? Ultimately, it's about intent. This is this goes back yeah. to, I don't know if you, if you were tuning in early in the, in the show where we spoke about the ori, or the soul. Ultimately, your soul has its own language. It has its own syntax. And, and that's really what you want to aim to tap into. And again, that takes you beyond Step by steps, that takes you beyond names, that takes you beyond language. Now, if you're coming from that place, you could just grunt and moan. And as long as your will, your, your directed, focused will is in place, then whatever it is that you're trying to make happen is going to happen. Okay, so there's, there's different levels that you can come and tap into things at. Um, yeah. If you're not coming from that place, then certainly, yes, the language that you say things in does make a difference if that's not the place that you're coming from, certainly. Yeah, well, definitely, whatever reality that you tune yourself into, that's what's going to appear on the TV screen. Mm-hmm. So, uh, all right, thanks. thanks for your time, bro. All right, brother. Have a good night. Thank you, brother. All right, we got area code 904. Area code 904, you're on the line. Good evening, brothers. 
Peace. Greetings. Greetings. Yes, my name is um Awolaye. Um I'm a I'm a Muslim, bro. I've been a Muslim since about eighty eight. I did uh, the Nation of Islam thing and you know, that's basically, you know, what my foundation was and I ran into Europe but like in ninety six, ninety seven. And it was you know, it brought a lot of knowledge to me that I liked it. I liked it the cultural the culture, so I got into it and I received the hand of Ifa. Mm-hmm. And when I received the hand of Ifa, I received so many kings also and they gave me a do of a Warren Otur. Mhm. And so I stayed, you know, I stayed into this for about seven years. Then, you know, things weren't going like I thought it should, so I got back into Islam. But since I got back into Islam, it's been since, like, 2007. And it's, like, a longing still here in my brain, you know, just tell, talking to me and telling me that I need to take care of something for Esau, even though I left it alone. That's the only Ogun, Shango, Eshu, Elegba, all of that, I don't think about that too much, but the e experience, it gave me a, a, my destiny. So I'm just trying to find out, brother, if you know anything about that old dude, you know, it, does, does that have anything to do with Islam? Because you said something earlier about that. And can you say it to the old tour part? Mm-hmm. You said it, it, the old dude was Owonrin Otura? Owonrin Tura? Owonrin Tura, yes. Right, okay. A Roman Tua deals with breaking away from tradition and creating your own tradition. Okay, that's what that Odu represents. You have the energy of a Roman. We were talking earlier and we said a Roman deals with the caging or the containing of energy. Um, but what it deals with is kind of like saying, um, okay, I got this. Now what's next? You know, it's like it's almost like almost kind of like a graduation, but like in the same class. Okay, I got I got my times tables. What do we got next? Fractions. And yeah. Otura deals with peace. Okay, that's a very peaceful time period. Peaceful do. And in that peace, in the in the absence of of that confusion, is when religions are created. Okay, so what that Odu deals with is is a person who creates their own way. So you may have to create some. Um, Ifa Islam hyphens, you know, um, but it, what it really deals with is creating a tradition in a ritualistic way that works for you. And what's mm-hmm. going to end up happening, you should document it, by the way, because what's going to end up happening is that other people are going to want to do what you do. Okay? It's mm-hmm. very similar to like the church. And you have those church mothers who also do readings, you know, or or they put your name in, in the book of Psalms, because, you know, you know, they want to get back at you for something. They put your name. They're yeah. really witches, and they witches yeah. sitting in the church. But they believe in Jesus and all of that. They've fallen out, shot out the whole nine, but they've established something else that complements that. So, really, they created their own religion, okay? So, that old dude deals with that, that you cannot, you cannot be so loyal to tradition. That's what that old dude was telling you. Okay, you you have to learn to break away from the tradition and create your own new tradition. Oh, that's why you feel in a hankering like that. Okay, and that's yeah. that's going back and forth. It's back mm-hmm. and forth, you know. Yeah, don't 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 go back and forth. Like, don't go back to Ifa, and don't just stay with 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 Islam. Try to find the common points between the two of them, and try mm-hmm. to create something new. Engineer something new for yourself using both of them, but it doesn't have to be an either or situation. Don't do that, and that's never good to do anyway. You know, don't 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 be loyal to anybody's religion. I never thought I can use. I, I it feel like I don't know if it, if I should feel hypocritical, but it feels hypocritical to do both. Either it's like either you do one or you do the other. But what you're saying to me is combine both of them. Yeah. All of these religions and even these Orishas are just expressions of a higher thought. Okay, mm-hmm. so instance, you know, um, even when you're dealing with, with the science of Allah or, or the peace, you know, we hear reports and stories about that, that entity that existed before Allah. Okay, now some would call that the triple stage darkness, okay, that Allah came forth from. Okay, well, we have the same type of story in, 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 in our Yoruba culture with Olu Dumare coming forward from this darkness, you yeah. know. So 
the commonalities that exist in each of them, you know, um, and that's really what you want to you want to start working with that. I mean, you get if you even start dealing with the ninety nine attributes of Allah, you know, um, and just start looking at the different names, you know, yeah. the different names of Allah, and you'll see, really, these things were used for ritual. You yeah. know, you take one name, you say it one thousand times over a piece of bread, and then you eat the bread. It's a ritual. You see, so well, I got a, I got a brother that do that do rituals for me in the name of Allah in Islam, but he say he do it the Islam way. He's from Nigeria, but he don't do it the Yoruba way. He say he do it the Islamic way. There's no they such thing as the Yoruba rituals. way. Don't even worry about it, bro. Right. That's like saying we do something the American way. Yoruba That's is right. a place. You know, and it's a language, but it's not its not a religion. You know, okay. the reality is when you go to Nigeria and you get down with cats in Nigeria, they mix everything in. It's not like over here. Over here, they they, they present this, this, this dogma because they know that's what you want to buy. So right. they say, look, you want to get initiated, it's going to cost you five Gs, $10,000, and we have to do it this way. There has to be a goat. There has to be this. I'm going to tell you this. First of all, most of those those Nigerian Islamic Babalaos, they don't even do animals when they get initiated. They just do that when they come over here because you don't need to use the animals because you're just looking for the ashe, okay? So you can get that from anywhere. You can get that from meditating, from praying, from deep breathing, doing qigong. You can get exactly. ashe. Uh, matter exactly. of fact, Brother Alim was one of the first, if not the first people. I, I heard him on a tape some years back, and he was sharing... Um, how much energy is released in, a, in, in ejaculation? Okay, that's Ashe right there. You see? Yeah, so you know, you can get it. You get the energy from wherever you want to get it from, and um, you know that's what it really boils down to. Not w- what name you put on it, but something that man, man made up because they okay. they were lonely. You know, I got okay. lonely, so I'm gonna make me a god. Don't worry about that. You know. All right. Thank you very much. Right. You're welcome, brother. Oh, you're welcome, brother. Uh, All right, let's go to seven one three. Every code seven one three. You're on the line. Peace, 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 peace. Uh, yes, sir, brother. How you doing? Um, I'm glad I, I caught you uh, on this particular show. I have a question, brother, in regards to you said you are. You're affiliated with the IFA, is that correct? Yes, sir. Or the Yoruba? I study IFA. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, great, great. That, that's 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 what I thought you had shared. I want to share something with you. Um, I just recently, two months ago, um, did an initiation mm-hmm. for uh, two students of mine, mm-hmm. and through uh, uh, Tanaga Dalam, an initiation to Tanaga Dalam, which is Javanese for divine power, inner power. Mm-hmm. And after the initiation, after the, the the initiation period, you know, we were talk. Well, actually, during the initiation period, we had to speak. We, well, I'm sorry, we had to talk uh, because there are two junior priests with the Ifa. And uh, uh, he talked about his Babalao, and and he he uh, uh, shared some things with me. But one thing that he did share was is that uh, all the years of study with uh, the Babalao and the time that it took uh, the process of this initiation, he shared, he said, you know, the Babalao can't, my Babalao can't, has not taught me this and was not able to open up my energy centers. Mm. Now, uh I have the question is is this uh what method that is traditional with the uh the Ifa and uh the traditional religions of the continent that cultivates energy because what I've discovered in my training and study is that the key ingredient and making all the rituals and all the spiritual practices and all uh, uh, the supernatural. And supernatural just means that it's beyond the laws of nature, the common laws of nature, such as levitation, defies the law of gravity. That's supernatural. Super just means above. 
Uh, now, uh, so uh, the, the question I have is, where is it that in the ephod or is the energy being developed? Is there a particular practice that instructs you on how to develop the energy, you know, to 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 remove? The uh, 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 the impurities in the well, not, I don't want to say impurities because that takes it into another area. But I'm speaking more so of unblocking your energy centers. Is that spoken about? Is that specifically taught? Certainly. Okay. First thing is important to understand that just because someone says they're Baba Lao doesn't mean they're Baba Lao. No, right? no, 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 no. Um, so, so the individual I want you... that I trained wasn't a Baba Lao. No, he I understand that. You priest. said that they they studied he with spoke... the Baba Lao. No, I understand. What you're right, I understand. You said they study with the Bible out. What I'm saying is that again, I have to say the same statement. Just because someone says they're Bible out doesn't mean that they're Bible out. Number one. So a lot of people throw that that term around because you can go to Nigeria with fifteen hundred dollars sometimes or two thousand dollars, get an EFA initiation, come back to America and tell everybody you're Bible out. But that's not. It, it takes a very long time to truly be a Bible out. For the most, for the majority of your time, you're a student. Of Ifa, okay. Um, so I just kind of want to pre-qualify my answer with that. You know, it, I don't want maybe that one incident to represent Ifa as a whole because it may not. Whatever that person was taught may not really represent Ifa as a whole. Number two, I also want to say this: use whatever you can use to do whatever you need to do. It doesn't have to be Ifa. Um, I am not a religious person, and I, and I'm not in a religion. Okay, I, I have no loyalty not to Nigeria or or any other tradition. I could care less. Um, I have I have loyalty to my life's purpose and my life mission. I have loyalty to my own soul, and that's it. So um, no system in no way is complete in itself. It's just like martial arts. You know, you may get into Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but, you know, three guys, stand, you can't fight three people on the, on the ground. You know, you may get into Wing Chun, but that's all close quarters. Now, what am I going to do for long range? So, you know, you have to combine different things. Now, in terms of developing your energy or what we call, again, developing your ashe, there's a million and one things that we do. And that's why the initiations are staged. Because when you first come in, or if you're given the right hand of a rumula, you know, you're built up to a certain place. You're, you're taught certain songs. You're, you're taught certain things to eat. You're, you're taught um, the, the science of, of herbs at, at certain times. You know, okay, this time of the day, the herbs interact with each other like this. But when the sun is at this time, it interacts like this, and this builds your eye shape. Put this in your mouth and chant this. So there's a deep breathing. There's all kind of different things. Um, in the Risha tradition, uh, the dancing, the singing, the drumming, all of these things open up these chakras, and they cultivate that kundalini energy. Again, that's why we say Eshu is the only bodhi, the gatekeeper. He's the he's the where you start everything at. Now Eshu lives within the root chakra, so that's where that kundalini is coiled up at. So once you start, when you when you begin and you come into tradition, you do a lot of work with that Eshu. You, you you're constantly chanting. Eshu di day, eshu di day, eshu di day, and you might they may, you might be told to chant eshu di day five thousand times while weaving a basket. Okay, oh, now right, and that di day means arise, di day means to stand up. Okay, right. so you're telling the snake which, rise which, up, which, which is which is the same meaning within the ancient Kemetic traditions of shu, which means to rise up. Hmm. Mm. How long, let me ask you a question How long would that take to Well, let me say this Well, I, I basically want to know How long would that take With your process To open up the seven chakras The seven major chakras uh, Because it sounds like It would probably take More than 21 days uh, It depends on who the person is But I think you, the first thing You can't put a time on something like that You can't say okay it takes, And people will say that I can open your chakras in three hours You know the, the, No 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 no, no. You, 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 you can put a time on it Okay As, well, as a matter of fact you, 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 I've done that repeatedly All right. I've done well, that You can't put a time on it If it's done properly That's excellent You know you, you actually can Because you can uh, okay. if, if you 
uh, you can feel your crown chakra at the top of the head if you just pull up your anal muscles. Mm-hmm. You cut your urine. If you cut your, if you, if you imagine you're cutting your urine off, you can feel your crown chakra right now. And if mm-hmm. you do it multiple times, if for the insensitive, you can, uh, they will eventually be able to do it if they, if they contract the anal muscle ten times. You can uh-huh. feel because the anal muscle is the bottom of, uh, uh, of, of the the tai chi pole. Right, but feeling something channels. and employing something is two totally different things. Yeah, you know, yeah. you feel a lot of different things, but to employ it and learn how to do it at will and and, and instantaneous is two totally different things. Yeah, that's what I teach, and that's what I have experience in. Okay. I've done that. So I've duplicated it, this. All right. and, so, and it's scientific. It's beyond the point of belief. It can be duplicated repeatedly with multiple yeah. people. Okay. Well, yeah, again, I mean, we've, we've actually successfully, uh, uh, as but long like, as you continue to practice. Again, it's, it's like I muscle. was saying, brother, there's a million and yeah. one ways to get to get to to, to get back to heaven. Right. Okay. And, so. and I say this too. I have to say this because um, I've also done the same thing with others, and we said we've been able to do it within just two hours. Mm-hmm. So, exactly. So I mean, the just, just pulling the muscle about, right so, there is instantaneous. Right. It's, it's not just talking about the crown chakra. It's not just talking about 21 days. You know, I, we've been able to do it within less than two hours, you know, with a class right. full of people. When, when, when you know, we so, speak about 21 days, we're talking about 21 days from the point of the human level to the point of divine level. It takes three cycles of seven. Since you know, It takes three, you know, everything is done in three stages. Three represents completion and seven represents God. So and that together that you have a complete. The rough techniques in which that you're using in order to do or to master during those 21 days. Um, like, for example, you might have what is called the Kriya Yoga, which is one of the most powerful breathing meditation techniques in which that actually can um, cause the Kriya Yeah, the Cobra to breath, we use that as well, the Cobra breath, the Dragon right. breath. Okay. We have those different breath. breaths as right. well. This is real monastery, a uh, uh, high-level Tibetan like Qigong, uh, Nagong right. and Qigong that right. we, we have. And, and what the I brother is sharing, I'm asking and agreeing with. I was taught and trained by Master Yadisir's body. So I know mm-hmm. exactly what you're talking about. The, the yeah. thing is, again, and I'm going to I'm gonna actually, and I understand what both are both saying. I mean, again, it depends on the person. And we're talking about employing right. something on a consistent and persistent basis or experiencing yeah. something based on your instructor bringing you through. So but that's kind of right. 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 Exactly. If, exactly. if you well, I mean, if we go to a well, check like, what I'm saying it goes for back a second. To what you said too, brother Yuya, when you mm-hmm. say that some people come back here with gifts, we know that by even studying astrology, if you study the law of the self, no, of an astrological chart. Here, bro. Hello. We here. Definitely find information out. You know, right. the gifts in which that a person brings back here. You know, so. You know, some might have more gifts than others, so something might not take 21 days for um, one person as it that's might exactly be for what I'm saying. Yeah. So exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. And we always say now fully what you're talking about, brother. When you go onto the phone line, we got area code 678. Area code 678, you're on the line. Uh, yes, this is Brother Hondo Solomon calling in uh, just to support my brother Yuya. Um, I had another phone call I had to take, uh, and I wasn't able to listen to the rest of the show. However, I always call in and, and support uh, whatever the brother is talking about because I know <laughs> I know it's going to be something deep and helpful to the masses. Peace, so, uh, yeah, exactly. peace, peace, uh, peace to everybody else on the on the show. Peace, um, brother. I I'm just listening in, just catching the tail end of the show. Um, so I'm just behind the scenes right now, but uh, again, shalom to brother Yuya, and we'll keep up the good work, brother. All right, thank, give thanks, thank you, brother. Give thanks, thank you, brother. All right, we got area code seven zero four. Area code seven zero four. You're on the line. Hello, how are y'all today? I'm got it. Fine. Um, so I've been listening um, for like maybe the last fifteen or twenty minutes. And um, when it comes to when it comes to Arisha, I, I want to say a couple of years ago, about three or four years ago, I received my hand, and then suddenly uh, my godmother disappears. Right <clears throat> within months, 
And so, um, you know, it, 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 I felt really sad about that, but parts of me said, well, maybe she's, she's taking you as far as she can take you, right? And so I didn't, <clears throat> you know, I didn't get really sad about it, but, you know, it was like, oh, wow. So after that, I just kind of start almost like <laughs> um, teaching myself things. Um, and so it didn't only um, – it, it didn't only it didn't move forward in Orisha to me. It moved forward into like candle magic, into crystals, into understanding herbs, into definitely meditation and dragon breath, like you were saying before, and working with my own kundalini and feeling it shift from you know the bottom level up to like my solar chakra here. And I can it feels like a a small earthquake at times. And um, it it could be very sudden. So you know I'm I'm learning all kinds of different things. But going back to you know receiving my hand that day and being giving an odu <clears throat> of Oguna Meiji and just doing my own studies. But you know hearing you, brother um, Yuya, I, I just want to know like what do you what do you think of all this? Of all this that you're experiencing, you're yeah, speaking about? yeah, all this that I'm experiencing, the fact that okay. <clears throat> you well, know okay. I was initiated and then you know took my own initiation path and have just you know really been learning. And then, um, can you say anything about Ogunda Meiji? Sure, but l- let me let me address you know your, your first part of your question. Okay. Uh, First off, with receiving your, your hand of a rumula, what it does is it brings you into tradition as someone who says, okay, this I I believe there's this, this something to this. It may, it may be true or it may be something that I, I venerate in a sense. Huh? Um, that whole story of being initiated and then godparents disappearing, unfortunately, is very common. Okay, um, people initiate you, they get your money, and then you can't find them. And there's a couple of pieces with that to keep in mind. Uh, number one, even though I'm initiated, I actually don't really stress initiation. I'm not big on initiation at all uh, okay. because we have we have the wrong idea about it often, and it's sold to us like we're buying a car. Like once you get initiated, this is going to be right. You know, you're going to get hit by a car if you don't get initiated, and all that type exactly. of foolishness. You know, the truth is, any system that you have to initiate in and to really like learn it, don't mess with it, you know, um, and that's Europe or anything else. The, the truth is if, if we came up in Nigeria in certain environments, we most of the stuff we would know already before any type of initiation. Mm-hmm. So, um, so your initiation is supposed to initiate your learning path here in the diaspora. But there's one thing you said first. You said my godmother. Now, that's, that's Catholic. We don't deal with godmothers. That's something that, and I know everybody says my godmother, my godfather, or my my padrino, or my my pa, pa, madrino. That's not really um, traditional. That's a diasporic thing that happened because of the maafa, and families were dispersed and broken up. So now they created this concept called the ile, which is a house, and you had a godmother and a godfather and godbrothers yeah. and godsisters. That has nothing to do with. Ifa or Orisha, you don't have that in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what would have normally have happened is that you would have um, went into a, sh- a shrine or a temple, and you would have went there for services and for different ceremonies and things, and that's how you would have learned. Okay, uh, you wouldn't have needed a godmother, godfather. Now, you always had someone who would echo you and guide you and, and teach you and show you certain things. That was normal. But this whole other thing, this is some diaspora stuff, and I urge anyone listening to stay away from it, okay? Um, I also urge anyone to stay away from anyone who's pushing to initiate you without teaching you anything first. Right. Okay, because there's there's really no point in in doing it it, unless you just want an experience. If you just want to see what it feels like and see if you might fall out in the spirit or or the reason may come, you could do that. But... Mm -hmm. um, you need to stress more education. We're we're different than the Nigerians of old. Okay, so there's a certain interaction that we have with these energies that they didn't have until they got initiated. Okay, you have little children who who have dreams about mermaids, 
and they have dreams about men walking around with their heads on fire. That's Shango. Mm. Mm. You see? So what's happening is that the original, this, because we're evolving, and all this collective work that our ancestors have been putting in for millions of years that we've been here, we're now to the point where we don't need to kill all these animals and do all these different things in order to have a conversation with a thought form that's on the astral plane. We don't have that's to right. do all of that to, to do that at this that's point right. because of that's all right. of that ashe that's in our blood. When we were talking about that egun, so we're yeah. coming out different now. Okay, so your focus needs to be learning before walking through somewhere blindfolded. Okay, um, so that's you know addressing the first part. Now, as far as the things that you're experiencing now, just like the brother who called earlier, who spoke about opening up the, ch- the chakras. Mm-hmm. When you get initiated, that's what happens. They bring you through a process where they open up your chakras and they imbue you with a certain amount of ashe. So now you start having more prolific dreams. You start having different types of experiences, past life, you know, uh, regression takes place, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just a normal part of, of what's happening. And the truth is, if you would have committed yourself to three months of hardcore study, you would have had the same thing happening without the uh, initiation. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's coming from somebody who is initiated and initiates people when they really want to be initiated. But as all my students know, I, my first thing I'll say is, no, nah, I don't want to initiate you. Let's let's study. Right. You know, um, that's more honorable, and that's really more in alignment with tradition. Our ancestors didn't study all this stuff for us to have to do exactly what they had to do. That just that doesn't even make logical sense, you know. Um, and it leaves so it, no room for adaptations either. It leaves no room for adaptation, exactly. So, you know, we're in this place now where we're growing and evolving different. And like you said, well, I'm getting into the candle magic. Like I told the brother who called earlier, um, I'm not going to say my system is better than your system and your system is better than mine. I don't really care about all of that. If yeah. you are doing something that open up your chakras, wonderful. That's great. There are many different roads to heaven. Okay, yeah. so now if you've determined candles and crystals are working for me, then you rock your candles and crystals. You you swag off in the sunset with an armload full of candles and crystals. You do your thing to the tilt until you get tired of it, and then you make sure you go do something else and don't turn into a candle and crystal lady. When yeah. it's time to go now play with fire, and and play with tree bark and hug trees, you go do that, and you kick the candles and crystals to the side. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that would be my word on that. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the phone line. You're welcome. Thank you. Let's go to area code 347. Area code 347, you're on the line. Three, four, seven. Peace, that's me. Peace, 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 peace God. It it's me on peace. I just listening. Um, All right. Uh, I well, do appreciate you listening. Hello. Yes, we hear. Yeah, I, I agree with with a lot of what the brother's saying. I'm initiated oh, yeah. in some of the. Um, I'm initiated in some of the. I'm initiated in Palo. And a lot of what you're right. saying it's a lot of it's a lot of fraud out there, it's a lot of problems. Right. But I do I do think at times it is important to get initiated. Right. Um, for certain experiences. Just like I hear people say, Oh, it's okay to chant Nam Yo Ho Renge Kyo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's okay to chant Nam Yo Ho Renge Kyo, but then there's other things that go along with that practice. They right. do something known as ganyo. Every morning they'll mm-hmm. yeah they'll read they'll read the Lotus yeah. Sutra every morning and every evening. So right. for them, if you ask those Buddhist people, "Nam Yo Ho Renge Kyo," is that okay? They'll tell you no, because chanting "Nam Yo Ho Renge Kyo" is equivalent to the water, and ganyo is the soap that's going to clean your ass. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm. So sometimes things do be missing. You know, it's okay. I heard you say you um, you may not need to do animal sacrifice. That's okay sometimes, but I still do animal sacrifice, and I don't even eat meat. 
on a regular mm-hmm. basis. But it's okay for me to feed my Nkisis. It's okay for mm-hmm. me to feed certain spirits. It's okay for me to feed my ancestors. It certainly is okay. There's nothing wrong whatsoever with animal sacrifice at all. And I advocate it. Okay, and I also advocate eating the meat of the animal that, that you give to your to your inkisis or your lotis or or your your abusom or your orisha or your egum. So you know it's not really an issue of that, but it's an issue of being sensitive to where we are today and what's needed and what may not be needed. And that's really that's really the key here. I'm not I'm not um, uh, saying that we need to strip things. But we, it's definitely time, sometimes we have to re-examine, you know, well, why was this done in the past? Was it even done like this in the past? You know, and and, and why is it? Why am I giving a chicken or why am I giving a duck? What's the difference? Or why are you telling me to give a turtle? What, what's the difference in a turtle or a duck? Or why do I have to give a goat now? You know, so it's important that when we start getting into things like sacrifice or we get in, we get in even to these initiations or rituals. Now, of course, we know with initiation, we're not allowed to know so much before we go into it because it is a secret thing. But especially when we're doing these uh, tutus, these, these adamus, you know, these ebos, it's important to, for us to understand, especially those of us who are initiated, those of us who are awos and babalaos, why are we pulling from certain things? Why are we using a chicken? Why are we using a rooster? What does a rooster represent? What does a chicken represent? Okay? That rooster is that cockiness. Half the time you're being told to sacrifice a, a, a rooster, you're really being told to sacrifice your ego. Yeah. When we go, just as arrogant as we are and egotistical, if we kill the rooster, throw it in the garbage, and we still egomaniacs. And then we, mm-hmm. we we wondering why next week we did a reading and the elbow came up again. We got to do another rooster, yeah. you know. Yeah. So but, I'm not saying that that shouldn't happen, but it's it's time for us to start examining, you know, what these Orisha and these energies are, what the Enkisis are, what's the relationship between the Enkisi and the Orisha, you know, what is the relationship between what I'm told to sacrifice. When you're sacrificing something, to sacrifice just means to make it sacred. Okay, so all you're doing is taking something from the mundane world, which we're at third dimension, and you're sending it to the fifth dimension. Because things that you need to happen, they need a vehicle of travel. It goes back to that vampire thing that we were talking about earlier. Blood is a vehicle of travel. Okay, you have these thought forms and you have these spirits, and in order for them to manifest themselves or to manifest their works into the third dimension, they need some type of vehicle to travel on. Okay, this is what this is what even the science of melanin or, or draconis, known as the night traveler. Okay, this, we're talking about traveling. So we give the blood so that they have a vehicle to travel here. They can they can materialize. But the truth is, there's also Ashe and what we call, as you know, your Ariki, or that's that's your, your praise chant. Okay, or your affirmation. For instance, the sister also said she said she um. Ogun de Meneji came up for her, which is Ogun. A wonderful chant that you could do for Ogun is Ban Ran Gandan. Okay, and I'll say it slow for those who have that Odu. Ban Ran Gandan. Okay, and I do that, you know, for different things, but you say it fast. And you keep saying it over and over. And that's actually a Hindi chant. And if you go to certain temples, You'll hear them chanting that over and over and over. And what that actually is, is the sound that iron makes when you hit it with a, with, with a hammer. Uh, you mm. see, iron, you see. That's so that. now when we do that chant, we can do the chant, or we can ask, why the heck are we doing this chant? What does it actually mean? And when we, that's what Ifa represents, going beneath the surface. When we go beneath the surface a little bit, we realize, ah, this is emulating and reproducing the sound that iron makes in the cosmos. So I am becoming iron. I am becoming Ogun when I say this chant. You see? So no blood involved. You know, and I'm not saying that we don't need blood for something, but... It's important to understand for many people, I'm not saying for all people, but for many people, the blood is a crutch. If you have built up your chi, your prana, your ashe to a certain level, then you do not need these things. You need to get the chicken. You need to get the goat because you need the energy of these things to feed whatever it is you're feeding. 
But if you can generate right. that energy, and, like I'll go back to Brother Ali again. Brother, go ahead, brother. Let me ask ahead, you this, um, brother, um, you yeah. Is that because they will begin to start feeding on your life force synergy? Um, not necessarily if, when you're dealing have, with these. If you, you do not have um, something in which that they can utilize as far as, like you were saying, the life travels and which that, hint, you know, help with the manifestation. They will feed on your energy if you send them to do something. Mm. You know, if you send me to the mm. store but don't wow. give me enough money, I'm going in your pocket. Mm. You right. see, because you sent me. Now, if you don't send me, I'm not going to feed on you because I'm indifferent. I already got, Ogun doesn't need my little punk chicken at the end of the day. There's enough killing and car accidents going on. Ogun straight. You see? Right. So, but if I send Ogun to do something and I don't pay Ogun the money, you're going to say, look, man, you call me down here, you woke me up, I'm here, I'm taking something. So now I'm sleepy for three days. Or I'm, right. I'm hungry, I'm eating all this food, or I'm horny. <laughs> you know, now I'm having weird thoughts like, oh, I'm going to have sex in the shrine. And I don't know where it's coming from because I didn't give that energy that was necessary. So the reality is what you really want to work towards is not necessarily saving up your money for animals. You want to really work towards building up your chi. You know, it's to the point that you're now generating so much ashe that your bara, your word power, is all that's needed. You don't even have to do an elaborate ritual. You just say, oh, boom, take care of that. And you have exactly. so much ashe in the bank account. He's like, all right, cool, because you already got so much ashe. I don't need anything from you because your word power is strong enough that that's all I needed from you. Mm-hmm. Excellent, brother. Appreciate that. All right, let's go back to the phone. We got area code 267. Area code 267, you're on the line. Peace. Peace, daughter. Um, I'm actually new to the show, and I'm new to all of this knowledge. Um, my king introduced me, and I'm just trying to get some understanding. So what advice would you give to someone who has no knowledge of any of this stuff? Well, at least that I can recollect. Okay. Well, well, what, well I, what I would okay, say I'm first sorry. is, Oh, I'm sorry, brother. Um, but what I would say first is go to our website, www.dralimlbay.com, mm-hmm. and go to Metaphysical and a Religious Confusion. That particular section will help you with um, coming into knowledge of self as far from almost every angle dealing with um, metaphysics, occult, esoteric information, to religion, to, which is compared to religious studies, everything is basically embedded in there. So that's www.dralimelbey.com. All right, so check okay. us out. And now, brother, you got? Okay, well, I'm going to co sign that first off, you know, because um, brother uh, Alim is a very good start. Uh, uh, and probably a good finish. You'd be able to cover you for a while. Uh, but I would also say, in a very simplistic sense, start with whatever you have an interest in. Mm-hmm. Start right there. Let's say if you love, you know, whatever you, it could be music. If you love music, start with music. And what I mean by that is, you know, um, start picking music that you know and figure it your soul. That's good for you to have certain messages because you already know you're there. What you want to do is when you start coming into some information, you want to not necessarily look for new stuff to do. You want to look at what you're already doing and determine if maybe you're already doing something that's real deep and divine, but you didn't realize it, but it was something that was encoded into you. Okay, so if you're a singer or you like music or you like to dance or you like to have sex or whatever it is, you start looking at those things. You know, look at your name, you know, even if you have a, a Western name, look at that name and, and start trying to determine why was I given that name? What does that name mean? You basically want to start dissecting yourself where you're currently at before you start creating an artificial personality where you, where you think it's supposed to be. Okay, so I would tell you that should always be your immediate start. Just freeze everything. <laughs> Don't do anything new yet. You know, you start looking at what you already have, what your interests already are, and let that be your entry point. 
if you know you mm-hmm. like music, start grabbing some conscious music. Like there was some music played on the break that I, I was actually kind of enjoying. You know, start with your, your conscious music, things like that, things that will start giving you positive affirmations in certain different directions. If you like artwork, start drawing different art that just comes to you. It's different, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. These are these would be spiritual things, and that will start pushing you towards where you are supposed to be. But you don't want to negate who you currently are right now. You don't want to do that. Okay, perfect. I'm actually an artist, and I, and my passion is to work with children. Like, um, and so I try to use my art to heal them and whatever they're going through. So, well, that, that should have been this right there. You know, mm-hmm. now all you're really looking for is somebody to put a name to it. But what yeah. is that? that? You know what I mean? And but you just start studying. Well, why do I like doing that? And what is? How does it make me feel? Because that right there is already you already got your religion. You're good. Mm-hmm. Your religion is art. So mm-hmm. you rock that until you outgrow that religion. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Peace. Peace. Please. All right, we got area code seven seven three. Area code seven seven three. You're on the line. Greetings. Peace. Seven seven three. Peace, brothers. How are you? All right, I'm doing well. Yes, uh. Peace to you, Brother Aleem. I haven't talked to you in a minute, but this is the High Priest calling from Chicago, Connect Grand Temple of Moore Science. All right, Brother. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Well, uh, I was online. I was uh, just got online, so I didn't get a chance to hear a lot of information this evening. But uh, what I did hear was this, and I want to share a little bit of this uh, just briefly. You know, we are teaching the science of self-mastery. To know oneself, that's true. We should be more teaching that we are all about to lie, we are all set, we are all the gods and goddesses are us. Right. In the book uh, Ancient and Modern Man by Henry Franklin on page 299, he states that once you become in your God state, and I'm getting ready to do a video called Ceremonies and Rituals Are Not Made for Man, once you come in your God state, you are the God. You don't need to appease nobody now. You don't know. You don't have to appease the gods anymore. You don't have to call them. You are them. You are the great old ones. So if you're going right. to pull libations, for those that pull libations, I always say libate yourself. You are the essence. You are the will. All the gods right. are supposed to obey us when we say something. Why are we right. not making all the gods and praying for them and bowing to them? If we the gods, they're supposed to do what we tell them because it's only your own will. From young archetypes of the mind is the psyche is the self. There is no God but ourselves. I mean, even Elijah Muhammad taught that it, to worship a God outside yourself makes you inferior to that God. So if we're gonna teach self mastery, we should definitely start teaching our people more so about themselves that they are the gods. There's no more need for rituals and ceremonies, pouring libations. Well, no brother, you for that. Um, actually broke that information down, brother. He's been breaking that information down throughout the whole show for the last two and a half hours. He definitely been going okay. in. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, I know, I know a lot of brothers tomorrow. You got to get this pack. You got to do this. You got right. to grab this and grab their pennies and do the egg yolk and do this and that. Even in what's his name, uh, Rudolf Steiner's book. Universe, Earth, and Man. It stated that the ancient priest at one time taught the members or the initiates that they look at a triangle, a particular symbol, that this symbol can be done with, it could be a healing symbol. And they would stare at it, and it would activate the symbols that's already in the DNA. Right. But there's no need for that now, because all we got to tell you is, and you anyway, do that. Mm-hmm. Because to continue to pay for the gods and worship these demi urges, you'll be afraid of them. They'll tell you, we'll tell you eyebrows off for six weeks. And then we'll do something for you. Or do this and that. The essence is already inside of us. No doubt. And I've been teaching this like for 22 years, but I'm coming out now, and I'm saying, hey, 
We ain't got to do all that. It's unnecessary. You're wasting your time and money. A lot of this stuff, people call me and say, it don't even work. It's you. You the candle. You the host. We need to do right. more now in teachings. Instead of giving them mythology, symbology, and allegory, give them the truth. It's you. It's always been you. You are your mm-hmm. own universe. You are the yeah. gods you've been looking for. There is no Jesus. There is no Allah but you. Right. Absolutely correct, brother. And as a matter of fact, that's what, brother, you got been breaking down. So we appreciate you giving a call, Lane. And I'm going to continue on here. I do have another question. Brother, we went to the phone, we went to the um, chat room, and the question was asked, what is um, the chant again for Ogun? Oh, the um, Ban, Ron, Don, Don. As a matter of fact, I'll split. Uh, it's G B A N R A N G A N. Okay, you need me to so say it again? One more time. Yeah. Sure. G B A N. G B A N. Yep. R A N. G G A N. Mm-hmm. D H A N. Okay, that's Bon okay. Ron Don Don. Bon Ron. And that first Bon, you got to say it's a hard consonant. So it's not just like Bon. It's Bon. Bon Ron Don Don. Bon Ron Don Don. Picture like if you was hitting a hammer, first one is going to be the hardest. And then when that iron vibrates, it's going to go down a little bit. So it's bang rang gan dan, bang rang gan dan. And keep saying it until it gets nasally. You know, you're going to keep saying it over and over. And usually you want to chant that for a minimum. Well, I do it for about 50 minutes. But if you could do it for five minutes for your first time out, that's good. And it just, you know, build up. And that's to clear the way. You know. All right. All right, any closing remarks, brother? We're getting ready to go. And um, before we go, though, um, if there's anyone that else wants to call in, just give us a call at 626-414-3535. That's 626-414-3535. Brother, you wanted to sum up the information that you broke down tonight? Sure. You know, I definitely um, pretty much in alignment with the, with a lot of the callers were sharing with everyone. Um, there are multiple ways to get to where we need to get to, and um, the Orisha. I have I have a site by the name of Orisha Religion. O r i s h a r e l i g i o n dot com. Uh, you can go to information, readings, classes, things like that. But I will say that the Orisha are formula. Um, it's just that OrishaFormula.com didn't have the same ring as with Orisha Religion, so I went with that. Um, but I have to part part is that, you know, what we're talking about here is working the different formulas of the cosmos, okay? And there is a comedic proverb that says that when Haru was a child, that the, the Neturu uh, looked after Haru. And when Haru became a man, he commanded the Neturu, okay? So what that's speaking about is, you have to mature and raise yourself up to that soul level, to being who you are, that self-defining, self-aware level. And then these same entities that you maybe yesterday had to burn a candle to, they now are bowing at your feet saying, okay, what do you need me to do? Okay, yeah. so that's the level you want to get to. You know, out of everything that I said, whether you're working with your Egun or whether you're working with your Odu or whether you're working with the Orisha, you gotta you gotta be clear that you're the one walking the planet. You're the one going through the struggle. You're the pilot of the ship calling the shots. You know. Um so again if anyone's interested in classes with me, you can also go to my school site, which is Sadulhouse dot com, which is S A D U L U H O U S E dot com. Uh you can sign up for classes, readings. I also have a blog talk radio show that I do on Fridays around six thirty by the name of Foundational Fridays, uh, but the name of the channel is Enlightenment and Transformation. So that's blogtalk.com, blogtalkradio.com forward slash Enlightenment and Transformation. And my students also host a show every Sunday at 1 p.m. Uh, by the name of Anu Asad.
Safo, uh, which is an excellent show. So I urge you all, if you want more information on Risha or just, you know, um, African occultism, metaphysics, definitely uh, look us up and you can, you know, I'd love to have you as a student, those of you who are on your way getting there. Uh, but that was pretty much what I want to say in closing. I appreciate you all having me uh, you, in this time. Yeah, this has been wonderful and uh, very good questions. And uh, I am a admirer and a supporter of the work that you're doing, you know, so I'm I'm not just coming from a guest perspective, but also a supporter's perspective, you know. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Right. Brother L, is there any closing remarks? Yes, uh, uh, I appreciate the brother uh, coming on the show and like me on a lot of the science uh, that he has been studying, he says, for 20 years. And uh, he has uh, uh, showed a lot, shed a lot of light on me on other sciences that we have around the world, you know, the yes. Nigerian, uh, especially dealing with the Nigerian esoteric mysteries. So if he calls that, I don't know if he calls that or not. But it if works. you don't, you have my apology. <laughs> no, that works. That sounds good. <laughs> so that, that's all I have to say on that end. All right. Beautiful. Thank you. And also, the caller, that, the caller that just called in, 916, you can actually call back in, and we will get to that question if you have one before we go. Um, call back in. There, The number is 626-414-3535. That's six two six four one four thirty five thirty five. Okay, we got area code eight six four. Area code eight six four. You on the line? Peace, brothers. How y'all doing? Peace, God. How you doing, You're brother? Doing well, Peace. brother. Great, great. I'm Michael. I'm calling from South Carolina. Uh, I would like to get the spelling of your uh, website again to take classes with you. And can okay. you uh, spell it slowly for me? Sure, sure. You can go to. SaduluHouse.com, and that's S A D U L U H O U S E dot com. Okay, hey, I sure appreciate you tonight, brother. I learned a whole lot, and yeah. um, I've been I've been wanting to study, and um, brother Aleem, I sure appreciate you. For doing what you're doing, keep up the good work, and uh, appreciate you, brothers, man. Peace. All right, peace. 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 Thank you. Peace. All right. Um, we thank you, brother Yuya, uh, once again for coming on. I mean, man, you dropped it, brother. That's all I can say. I mean, it um, did. you explained it. You know what I'm saying? It's clear as anyone that I've heard explain the Orishas. Um, the Agung, every facet of Yoruba, you know, or Ifa, you know, um, you know, that I've heard, you know, because I've been studying the information for about 20 years myself, and, um, you know, and you saying the same thing, that Ori is, is the highest, is the supreme, you know, that's right. and, that's, and that's essentially what we all have to come to realization, that everything else is a medium to use and is activations of certain components and, and compartments of the brain um, in which that acts in degrees as we gain consciousness or enlightenment or mm-hmm. endorsement, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, as we get and reach those highest levels, it goes back to like what you were saying, you know, the Ein, the Ein Sof, the Ein Sofi Earth, you know, mm-hmm. or the state of noon or new, you know, mm-hmm. that's, that's where, um, you know, the endorsement takes place at. So, you know, essentially, once we master ourselves, you know, we can reach the higher level. But until then, um, there's work in which that we have to do, whether external work in which that reflects the internal work or internal work that reflects as our, you know, external work, as above, mm-hmm. so below, as within, so without. So as long as we keep that as a supreme axiom, we never have to get in arguments about um, this information because um, it's all reflective of one another. Mm-hmm. You know, it goes back to what you said, too, is that the ancestors are our genes. You know, they're inside mm-hmm. of us. Yes. You know, and that's one of the um, things in which that I know, um, um, you know, me and Brother Bobby, you know, broke down, you know, some years ago. I mean, I remember when we was on the steps in, um, in Atlanta, Georgia, you know, we was at um, the Fulton County Library. 
and he broke that information down um, at that particular election, you know, back in 95. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, once we learn how to, you know, differentiate and discern, you know, this information, that's what also is the gift of discerning the spirits is necessary in order to mm. tell, like you were saying, as far as the difference between a, just a thought form or actual, you know, ancestor, you right. know, and the thought form acting as a familiar, acting in place of, you know, just to gain energy or just to gain attention or just, as you were saying, to become activated. Right. You know, you know, but it's merely a, you know, a shell or a disincarnated, you know, spirit or soul, you know. So, I mean, there's a lot to this information, and um, the clarity was supreme tonight. All right. We're going to have to definitely have you back on here, brother, real soon. So you make sure you keep reaching out to me so we can get you back on here. Yes, yeah. sir. Please Anytime. do. Anytime. My pleasure. All right. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. And brother L, we out. Peace. All right. Peace. First World Order Radio. Finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works.